Good day, and welcome to the Breaking with the Guy Who Sews Christmas Eve edition. I am so excited each and every one of you are here today, and boy, do I have a treat for you. This is by far the largest project I've ever attempted to do on this channel, and I think you guys are going to absolutely love this event. So if you don't already know what today's event is, we are doing a quilt trunk show where myself and over 20 other creators have joined me on this event to showcase their favorite quilt and tell us the story behind why it's their favorite. This project has been one that's been in the makings for about three to four months. It all started off when I received an email from one of my friends, Dawn from Quilt, My Quilt Projects, and she said, you know, it'd be really neat if I could do a quilt trunk show on one of my lives. So I sat down and thought about it, and originally I thought it'd be really neat if I was able to invite everybody onto the Zoom one at a time, having come in and out of the Zoom as we went live. But then after a bit of thought, I wasn't sure if that was going to work because if we had technolo technological issues um, and then also time zone differences, it wasn't going to be the most practical option for quite a few of my friends that were joining me in on this project. So I sat down and thought about it a little bit more and came up with the idea of pre-recording everything on Zoom and then adding it into the final product, which is what this is. And I think this is going to work out really well because I have folks from the west coast of the US, the UK, Canada, and also Australia. So, you know, especially for my friends in Australia, it's after midnight there when this is going to air. So that really wasn't going to be practical for them. So I really do think this is the best option for all. And that way, everybody that's participating can also be in the chat while this event's going on. So that way they can answer any questions as well. Um, and it makes it a whole lot easier. So today's event is going to be a little longer than on my normal live. It's going to be about two and a half hours from start to finish. So if you haven't got your snack or your favorite beverage, go and grab it really quick before we get started. But before we do this, I just want to let you know what the format's going to be. We have the 22 content creators. It's all lined up. And some of these folks you may not know because I've picked both larger and smaller channels. So that way you might get to know a few new channels that you're not aware of. So for each creator... I introduce them, I ask them to tell us a little bit about their channel, and then we'll go into their favorite quilt and why. Some of them have the actual quilts with them, some of them have um, given them away, or they don't no longer have it, and where that's the case, I'm going to post pictures as well, and it's going to be fun. I asked each person to keep it to about five minutes if possible. Some did, some had a story that took a little longer, and that's perfectly cool. So that's about it. We will all, many of us will be in the chat as well. And it's kind of nice that we can be in the chat so that way we can keep up, um, keep up with you guys and interact with you during the chat as well. So that's another thing I really like about this being pre-recorded. If you don't catch all of this, definitely go back and hit the replay because it's going to be a lot of fun and you don't want to miss a single minute of this. Oh, and to make things a little more fun, I am going to put a Google form at the end of this so that way you can vote for your favorite. So jot down which ones you really, really like. And I also really look forward to interacting with you and all the other content creators in the chat while this event's going on. So without further ado, here is our first guest. So our first guest on this quilt show is me. My name is Sean and this is the guy who sews. Well, you all know that already, so I'm going to skip that part. So let's talk about my favorite quilt. It would definitely have to be one that I made two years ago for my nephew. He was born in December 2020 and I learned that my sister was pregnant with him right as the pandemic was starting. So I sat down and thought about it for a while and thought about what sort of quilt would I like to make for him. And we all love Darkstons in our family. I have one, my dad had one, my sister has one. So to me, it was the natural thing to make for my little nephew. And at the point, at that time, we didn't know which gender the baby was going to be because um, they choose not to know until a baby is born. So it's makes, you have to, really do something that's more gender neutral which you know Darkson's came in perfect so um, I found a really cool pattern on Etsy from a Canadian designer and I'll put the link for that as well in the description and I looked at the pattern I purchased the pattern and I wanted to do a rainbow um, of Darkson's on this because Boston was a rainbow baby my sister miscarried a couple of times before Boston was born and I wanted to showcase that into the quilt, so I modified the quilt design that I purchased to make that work, and it worked out really, really well. And the other special connection with this quilt is that we had an exchange student here for, for the 2019-2020 school year. Her name was Misha. She was from Poland. And when 
the COVID pandemic hit, she had the choice of either staying with us um, through the rest of the school year, which was June, or heading home when the pandemic hit. And so she chose to stay with us, and she ended up staying with us through almost mid-July because of the border closures and everything else. And the special thing about this quilt is we started it mid-June, I think it was, and she went with me to the fabric store and helped me pick out all of the colors. So there's a special connection with between me and her and her being able to select the fabrics with me, and that just makes it even more special for me. And this is definitely by far my favorite quilt. It probably will be for many, many years to come, and I hope my nephew enjoys it as much as I do. So now let's move on to our next guest, who is not going to be me, of course. Our next guest here is Mark from the Quilting Marine, and I am super excited to have him on board. I've been watching his videos on and off um, for about a year now, and he has just done so many great things in the quilting world, and I'm just super excited to have him on board with us. So do you want to introduce yourself to the viewers and just let them know a little bit more about yourself? Sure, why not? My name is Mark Darrell. I go by the Quilting Marine on YouTube. Uh, I've been quilting for about seven years. Uh, what started it, what got me into quilting was um, uh, my grandson was being born seven years ago and I wanted to create a gift for his birth that you can't buy in a store. So the first thing that came to mind was a quilt. Uh, little did I know how hard it was to create a quilt. So I thought you could just walk down the aisle of Walmart, buy what you need and uh, sew some stuff together. Uh, far, far, far from the point. Um, made every mistake there is to make. And I thought, well, actually my sister-in-law got in touch with me. She knew that I was quilting. And she said, I should share my journey. And the rest is history. I started a channel. Um, I, I kind of direct my channel towards uh, sufferers of trauma, mostly PTSD, uh, military. And I've gone on from there to create some quilts. And I, you know, for me, the journey is building the quilt. I don't keep any of them, I give them away. I don't sell them either because I think that would take away from what I put into it and and we're here. <laughs> yeah, I, I just love your story and I just, yeah, am so honored to have you um, join us today. So, Thank you. Um, yeah, do you want to just tell us a little bit about your favorite quilt, which we talked about just offline, um, which is actually the one behind you, correct? Yeah, so this, this quilt behind me is, I call it the boot quilt. Um, Boot is a terminology that uh, military members use for new members. We, whenever a new member of the Marine Corps comes in, we call them a boot because they're fresh and they smell like leather, like of a boot. So I call this the boot quilt because all these squares are pieces of uniforms that I've worn since I've been in the Marine Corps in every combat theater that I've been in from Operation Just Cause in Panama, Desert Storm to Iraq. and. Um, I thought I would put together the Eagle Globe and Anchor, uh, the Marine Corps emblem um, is the Eagle Globe and Anchor. So I used a, a state fabric. So if you if you were able to zoom in on this, all of these are names of states, the states that Marines come from is throughout the nation. And, you know, I put it together to, uh, you know, support um, uh, veterans. And right now it's my favorite. I don't really have very many favorites because whatever I'm working on at the time is usually my favorite. But this is the most recent because I'm not working on it. Well, I'm not completed with anything right now. Right. And that's a very good point. Like your favorite today may not be the favorite in six months. So that's why exactly. I always exactly. the favorite. So yeah, that that's I'm glad you brought that up. That's a very, very good point. I just love um the design that you put there and, and it's even more special that it's actually made out of your uniforms that you did out of all the, the theaters you served in and we just want to thank you for your service oh thank you thank you and yeah and to the world because you know in a lot of ways the us does help protect the world in a lot of theaters so thank you thank you thank you for no that. worries no worries no worries the pleasure was mine all so right the next, the next thing that i'm going to be working on will be probably something way left from this you know this was just in the in the moment at the time this is what i felt uh usually what i feel at the moment that's what i try to put together so i'm really feeling kaleidoscope i'm feeling kaleidoscopy right now and my, that'll probably be my next project is a great kaleidoscope quote excellent yeah so definitely check out mark's channel it is the quilting marine i will put the description um the link in the description below um and i just want to thank you once again for joining me mark it was a pleasure and an honor having you Sean, and no I, worries, man. No worries, Sean. Anything. 
Yeah, and I hope to have you again on the channel for another project. Okay, no worries, brother. I'm here for you. Thank you. And we'll now move on to the next one. Okay, so uh, my next guest is actually one of the first YouTubers I started watching um, in the quilting world, Fallon from So Be It Quilts. I'm very excited to have you back on the channel again. Thank you. Thank you, Fallon. How are you doing today? I'm good. And I always love being on your channel. It's always fun. So thank you for inviting me. I love this idea. So I'm excited. Thank you. And it's, it's a pleasure to have you again. So for anyone that doesn't know who Fallon is, she has a channel called So Be It Quilts. And we'd like just to explain a little bit more about your channel, what you do, and that sort of thing. So on my channel, it's quilting, obviously. I do a lot of unboxings. I love sharing different quilt boxes just so people can kind of get an idea for themselves if it's worth their money. I mean, they can get expensive. So I love sharing those. And then of course, tutorials and reviews I like to do as well of different quilting notions and rulers, especially. And that's one of the things I love about your channel and your reviews is you are very honest. Like you won't go out and bash a product necessarily, but if it's not something that is your aesthetic or something that's gonna suit you, you you tell us and then you explain why, because everyone's different. What doesn't work for you may work wonderfully for someone else. And you do an excellent job and of explaining why it, it isn't for you. Um, and that's oh, one of the things you. I really do love about your channel. And I think a lot of your viewers do. So we're here to talk about quilts and our favorite quilt. And Fallon has brought hers along with her. So we'd like to show us your quilt and just tell us the story behind it and why it's your favorite. All right, so I have to tell you, this was so hard to pick my favorite quilt. I mean, I'm sure everybody <laughs> struggled with it, but I kept thinking of so many different ones that I've done. And there's so many reasons one could be your favorite. Um, you know, the first quilt you've made or one that was particularly difficult outside of your comfort zone. Uh, so I kind of went the direction with choosing one that I'm really proud of because it was outside of my comfort zone. Um, it was working with all of my, well, not all of my scraps, but it was a scrappy quilt. It was a pattern out of a book that I found for scrappy quilts. And it was really hard for me to pair different scraps together because, you know, the way my mind works, I like everything to go together perfectly. If I'm using a blue, I like it to be all of the same fabric, that blue or red or whatever. So it is a kind of Americana uh, quilt. And even the background is scraps that I have like very neutral colors in the background and then reds and blues to make the stars. And this is one you did earlier this year, correct? I did at the beginning of the year, my goal started out this year to be working with my scraps and getting some scrap quilts done. And honestly, this is the only one that I finished. I have some others started, but this was so hard and I'm really proud of it because there were so many half square triangles on it. I had to cut out all of the fabric very specifically because I couldn't, you know, use my rotary cutter and ruler like I would typically do just cutting strips and sub cutting them down. I had to cut very individual squares from small pieces of my scraps. So this was a challenge and my goal of getting to other scrappy quilts kind of fell to the wayside because this one took so long for me to do. Um, yeah. I, I love it though. I love how it turned out, uh, but it was very difficult like here working with, I don't know if you can see, like this one has grays in the background and then this neutral has pinks and getting my mind around being okay with that on it was so hard. Uh, but when you look at it all together, you don't notice all that and it turned out really good, I think. So uh, I remember watching the journey of you making it both on your Facebook group and on your channel. And I just loved seeing it. And I keep looking at that and the area I live in is very close to Jamestown, Williamsburg, Yorktown, where um, the English settlement of the United States started. And that would look perfectly in one of the many museums because it just matches that aesthetic so beautifully. And I'm, I'm just in awe that quilt. You did a wonderful job of that. And you should be, like you said, you are proud of it and you should be. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of, it was, I wanted to stop so many times. And I think I said that in my Facebook group, like, I'm like, this is, uh, it was hard, but, uh, and then I really like the back on it too, kind of has like a nod to like a bandana type thing. And 
I don't know. It looks like an old quilt that you would find, but it was new, like you had said. And it's, I, I don't know, I really like it. And I put some like red, I did like a flange binding on it through here and you have a little peak of red bandana and it, I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Me too. And you should be proud of it. It's, it's a beautiful quilt. And I'm very, very happy that you decided to bring that one along to show us. Oh yeah. Thank you. I, it was hard deciding. It really, really was. I and have to know though, are you showing us a quilt that you are proud of in this series? That I, I haven't decided. Look you know yeah. what? I've been thinking about that. And I think, yes, I will. I think that's might be number Amanda saying, yeah, yes. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Whether it's the thing on the end, I will definitely, yeah, I'll show mine as well. Oh, good. I'm going to have to look for that and hear the story. I'm not going to make you show me now because now I'm, I'm really interested, but <laughs> I'll be watching for it. I'm going to have to narrow it down because, you know, like it's you hard. It's, yeah, and that's a recurring theme. Like everyone says, you know, it's hard really doing one. But I, I want to thank you, Fallon, for joining us. And if you haven't thank checked you. out Fallon's channel, please do so. She does a lot of cool stuff and I think you'd really enjoy it. And then we'll move on to our next guest. Okay, so our next guest has been on the channel with us once before. It's Brandy from 100 Proof Quilter and I'm excited to have her join us today. How are you doing today, Brandy? I'm great. How are you? Doing well. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself in case some of our viewers have not had the opportunity to check out the um, goodness on your channel? All right. So. Um... Like you said, I, I, I go by the 100 Proof Quilter. My channel is um, a learn as you go channel. So as I learn things, I, I give them back out to the world. Um, I have lives on Thursday. Heck, I call it Coffee with Brandy. Um, I do unboxings um, and we do, um, we do so longs on Thursday morning. So we picked a, like a couple of weeks ago, we picked a design or a pattern and we're, we're quilting along with it. It's a, it's a pretty simple channel. I have a lot of fun. I don't get over there as often as I would like to um, because I'm usually at work when you have your lives, but they're always a lot of fun. And I've enjoyed watching your journey on YouTube because you and I started at a fairly similar time as well. So let's now talk about your favorite quilt. And you told me off camera that you did bring it with you. So would you like to show everybody your favorite quilt? And just sure. why it's your favorite. So I went with the very first quilt I ever made because I still use it on my couch. Um, and I think I went with it because um, we have some history. <laughs> um, let me figure it out. So um, now I learned with a lot of other people during the pandemic. I'm a YouTube University graduate. Um, sure. I, <laughs> I learned watching Jenny Doan and Angela Walters. So from start to finish, this is pieced and um, machine quilted by me. Oh, that is cute. So. It's very, very nice. <laughs> no pattern. I just put it together as I went along. Um, it's it's fraying in spots because, you know, I didn't know how to put a quilt together when I started. But, hey, it's still my favorite because it's, it's all me. <laughs> exactly. And it's, um, there's been others that have had shown their first quilt, which I think is awesome. And to me, it's definitely, you know, you've learned something from it and it's always got to hold a special place in your heart because it is your first quilt. And I think you did a really, really good job with that one there. And I was looking at the, um, the intersections, you know, you're lining up the squares and I'm, I'm no judge, but I mean, it looked pretty, pretty good, especially yeah, for you. Yeah, I did. I, yeah, I got them all. They're all, they're all centered. Yeah. I mean, that looks great. I mean, it took me a long time to get that aspects right and there's still times today you know eight years later that I can't get it right so for you to be able to do it that well first time my hat's off to you thanks so yeah this is yeah like I said this is still my favorite and I use it to cuddle up with every night on my Very chair nice. I'm glad that you have that yeah because you know I think the first quilt I made for me was probably several years into the into the mix so it's good that you are able to keep your first one and still use it to this day. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us today, Brandy, and we'll now move on to our next guest. Okay, so our next guest is Emily from, I believe the name is Tel Terribri. Okay, I'll let her give her channel <laughs> name. I'm having a moment. Um, she is new to the channel. Um, I discovered her on the YouTube recommendation system about a month or so ago, and I thought she'd be a wonderful addition to this little project of mine. 
So would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, Emily, about your channel and what you do? Sure. So my name is Emily. I'm uh, based in California and my channel is called Terribly Rad. It was came from a name that I was going to use years ago with a friend, but we never picked up. And so I kind of came back to using the channel um, in 2021 because I started everything off as I was challenging myself after COVID and shut down and everything. We're leaving. If you've been around, Trixie's here, she's ready to go. So um, so I, I started my channel kind of as a personal challenge to myself. I found that in 2020, I was starting quilt tops, but not necessarily finishing them. Like my own Christmas quilt top, I start, I made it in March and didn't quilt it until like crunch time into December. And so I kind of was like, well, I should challenge myself to finish quilts completely and not let them sit around. So I kind of came up with this 26 and 21 where the entire month of 2021, I made a new quilt from start to finish in every two weeks. So I took 52 weeks split in half um, so that I'd give myself a little bit of time to kind of let things get done. And so I kind of just kept going after that. I enjoyed kind of creating. I pushed it um, myself to do the videos because I'm not a video person. At least I wasn't two years ago, apparently, if I'm still going. And so I've been enjoying it ever since. So now I just post every week different projects I'm working on, different things I'm quilting, all sorts of fun. And uh, my little four-legged cat, uh, my four-legged roommate, as I call her, um, she likes to get very involved. And so it's kind of fun um, having her kind of enjoy it. And everyone comes around for her, comes around for quilt projects. So it's a good blend of the two. So it's been a lot of fun and I'm enjoying kind of getting to know more people along the way. Excellent. And I, I love seeing your videos. I don't get to watch them as often as I should. Um, but yeah, you do some wonderful projects and that's one of the reasons that drew me to your channel and invited you onto this little project. And I love having, um, your cat as part of your project. I, I have three dogs and okay. always, um, pop popular. They're always asked for in each video. They don't necessarily walk on the table. Thank goodness. Um, Finley used to, but not so much anymore. But the um, other reason we're here today, besides introducing you, and if you haven't checked out Emily's channel, please do so. It's It's got some wonderful resources, and I think you will enjoy it. And I'll put her um, link in the description below, along with everyone else, is to talk about our favorite quilt. And Emily did bring her favorite quilt along with us. So do you like to show us and then tell us a bit more about it and why it's your favorite? So I'll give you a little, it's, it's quite a big one. And so this quilt is, um, I actually grabbed the book. I took this class at a local shop um 2017 I think and it was the book that we were using is the fussy cut sampler so okay. each month I think there's like 48 blocks in here or something along that and so the instructor who's now become a good friend of mine she broke down each chapter and gave us different tasks and tools and tips and tricks about all the different piecing to it and different ways to fussy cut and how to use stripes how to use um words and letters and all sorts of stuff like one of these um right here along the top i believe this one like about like pattern matching so having the same fabric and using um the same color different colorways and getting those patterns to line up exactly so i picked this one because it was kind of like a it was definitely learning a lot of things but then also it kind of created my quilting style part of the project was to pick a theme so then it kind of had some correlation and some relevance to it and I kind of started off and I was like well I could do Disney I've got a lot of Disney fabric and but I didn't want it to like limit to that and so my theme ended up being cats and dinosaurs um so everything on here is cats dinosaurs blue green and yellow because those are like the colors that I like to use a lot and the colors that I find to be really my my personality and so every block has cats dinosaurs or both um in different ways so it's kind of fun hunting down things as well because one of the blocks is a one that's supposed to be um about yourself and i have been a dancer since i was three years old and so i was randomly searching etsy and i managed to find um if i can find the block 
I managed to find, oh, it's this one on top. I managed to find ballerina dinosaurs. Oh, nice. And so Good. I've got cats, dinosaurs, and tacos because who doesn't love tacos? And so it was kind of fun having the search, the hunt to find the right fabric in the right color scheme to then build my collection. And my mom even got involved when she would go um, visit my sister in Idaho at the time. She'd stop at quilt shops and find different cat fabric, different dinosaur fabric. So it was kind of became all involved to create this quilt. And it's been really fun. And I even took it to the next level and I fussy cut this strip of all these fabrics that I didn't quite make it into the front. And because when I do my backs, I don't like to have, I, I don't like to pattern match as much as I can, which is funny with a fussy cut quilt. And so I used that to, I created this strip down the back to alternate and fussy cut its way all the way through to make it so I could long arm it. So I kind oh, yeah. of took it a little extra level, but why not? <laughs> Hey, you do you. I mean, it's your craft and your passion and your time. And I, I love the family connection. I mean, I'm sure every time you look at that, you got to remember the fabrics that your mom drove mm -hmm. stores for. And I just, and that's one of the reasons I've really enjoyed talking to everybody about this project because I've heard so many wonderful stories, including yours. And I'm so glad that you decided to join us in this. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for sharing that story with me and again if you have not checked out emily's channel definitely head over and um check out what she has to offer because there's a lot of good stuff out there for you so um yeah have a great day emily and we'll see you um on the next project and um, we'll our next guest okay so my next guest is kendall from kendall taylor and i forget the rest of the channel name so like tell us your channel name and then just a bit about your channel yeah well my channel name is just my name kendall taylor um, I was gonna, I did for a little while have Quilting Basics on there, but then people couldn't find me because they always knew it was just my name. <laughs> so it's just Kendall Taylor. And on my channel, I do mostly pre-recorded videos that um, complement sew alongs that are hosted by Pat Sloan. Um, I'm one of um, Pat Sloan's ambassadors. So I take the night shift while everybody in the US is sleeping. I make sure that the Facebook group runs smoothly. And um, I get people excited and stuff about upcoming projects. And um, we're trying to engage the Aussies more. <laughs> Before my channel, 98% of my audience is in the US, but it is mostly just block tutorials for sew alongs. But I do do um, like ad hoc um, tutorials for a, um, a skill or a technique. So I just recently, everybody, uh, loved how I did my flying geese four at a time. And so I just did a separate tutorial for that. And I thought to myself, there's already a million of them out there, but okay, I'll make it because you're asking for it. <laughs> yeah, I find sometimes um, hearing it from a different person or just someone explaining it slightly different yeah. is what is, what, what is needed. So, I mean, I think it's great that you did that. And that's something I need to check out too, because I mean, I can do flying geese okay, but you know, seeing new techniques on something that would be something I'd be very interested in yeah so, it took me a, sorry it took me a while to get around to doing it because I'm like but there's so many out there already but within the first like two hours the comments that were coming in I was like oh okay like <laughs> hey it's, it's worth doing I mean if it's you know someone's asking for it I yeah and you can do what I say go for it yeah yeah um and it saves me in the future explaining every step because I already had like sew and flip and I had half square triangle one. So instead mm -hmm. of explaining them in every video, I link to those videos um, as a, as a compliment to what I'm actually doing. Other, otherwise the videos just tend to go for too long. Right. Mm. Yep. I try and keep under 10 minutes, but yeah. sometimes you can't. <laughs> so, um, the reason we're all here is we're talking about our favorite quilt and I believe you you don't have your favorite quilt with you anymore and you so I'm going to put a picture up um but, but tell us a little bit about your quilts you know when you made it why it's special it's just a um, story behind it and so forth yeah so my favorite quilt at the moment it was very hard to pick that's why this one is hanging behind me because that is my all-time favorite but my favorite one for right now I took part in a 100 blocks 100 days challenge Mm -hmm. hosted by Gnome Angel, who um, Angie, who's a fellow Australian, 
she used to live in Canberra, but she's up in um, Queensland somewhere now. And each year they do two of these 100 blocks, 100 days challenges. And this particular one was the um, fusion kinship sampler. And um, so basically from August 1 till the 8th of November, you created one block each day. Um, and it's using um, Marty Michelle templates or just normal piecing or paper piecing. So there was all these options to get it done. Okay. And um, I had been looking at it for the last three years, but this is the last year they're using that particular pattern. And I thought, you know what, let's do it. I've already got 10 million other things on the go. Why not? <laughs> so I actually challenged myself even more. And I said to myself, you within the hundred days will have it fully done, quilted, bound and gifted. Because no. the person who I was wanting to give it to, um, a very dear friend of mine, his birthday was the 8th of November. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you had to get it done on time. <laughs> I didn't see him that day, but on the 8th, I put the final stitch on the binding. <laughs> nice. I, I, I love that story. Yeah. Um, it's it's so and, great to hear everyone's story. And, you know, every, every quilt has a story behind it, whether it's a learning experience or whatever. And it's just wonderful that, you know, to hear your story and that quilt and the and I, I remember seeing your quilt the 100 day challenge and it was just so yeah. fun to watch and yeah. um, it's fun to hear the story behind that so yeah you know, thank yeah, you they, so much and, for yeah no that's fine and they have an online community um where we post our blocks each day or whatever I wasn't doing that I was doing mine 10 at a time mm -hmm. because I have so much else on like I'm I never have any less than five projects going at a time <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I added that one in. And I was also in the middle of working on a massive commission, which I think I posted to the Discord as well, the right. big um, right. Jaybird's Gravity one. Mm -hmm. um, and I just thought, no, I want to do this. This will be um, my friend's gift. And um, before the pattern disappears, let's get on it. And so I was doing them 10 at a time because it's not really that difficult for me right. because I don't have an everyday job as well. This is my job. Um, or right. part of my job. I do bookkeeping and accounting as well. But um, yeah, I just wanted to see if I could take that challenge. And um, I, most people, if you put the hashtag 100 blocks, 100 days, 2022 on Facebook or Instagram, you'll see everybody, they use that hashtag to post their stuff. And Ange herself is a big fussy cutter. So her blocks are always very artistic and her, her fabric placement and everything is just spot on but I decided to just go with a run of four shades of purple okay because that was my friend's favorite color and um, I basically did the blocks as they were in the pattern like fabric one two three and four and I picked the four shades of purple and um, and it just came out so beautiful I ended up sashing it in gray people will see and um yeah, and I might share with you as well a photo of my friend once I gave it to him. <laughs> okay. um, because in the photo that um, we shared just before, you'll see I gave it a huggability check before I handed it on. <laughs> okay. And the first thing he did when I gave it to him was just wrap it around himself. So, <laughs> That's awesome. so yeah, but um, it was just a really fun little challenge and being accountable and having the community really sort of helped you keep going and um for the first 31 days it was easy because the block number matched the day of the month it was starting right. on august 1 but after august 31st it's like well which block are we up to so in my daily posts even though i was doing them 10 at a time my daily posts i would say block 91 day 91 september 15 so right. that people knew, <laughs> knew where we were up to Yes. But then when I got to number 80, um, I'd finished the big commission quilt and I had a little bit of extra time. So I just did the last 20 blocks in a day and then went, yep, you've got two weeks now or 14, no, 20 days from 80 to 100 to get this quilted and bound. And I did it. <laughs> yeah, incredible. I think you did great with that. Yeah. Well, I like, you know, thank you for joining us and we'll, no um, yeah, um, it was great to hear your story and we'll now move on to the next quilter. Okay, so our next guest is Kelly from Kelly's 
crafts, cruises, and quilts, and I probably got it in the wrong order. And I that's apologize. okay. <laughs> um, she has been a longtime supporter of my channel, and I'm very excited to have her join me on this little project. Um, so would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel and what you do on your on your own little channel? Hi there. I'm um, sure I live in the Fraser Valley of BC, a little ways east of Vancouver. Um, I started my channel in 2019 early. I was, we've actually had it for a long time, but didn't do anything with it. So I was just uploading random videos. And that was the same time I started being a travel agent. So I kind of thought of going a travel angle. And in the first year, I didn't really do too much because I was learning what I was supposed to do and everything. And I thought, well, I'll put a few quilt videos in because I've been doing that since 2015. So that was kind of obvious and, you know, general life, whatever. Well, then 2020 happened and well, so much for the travel angle. So I just carried on with quilting. But I also wanted to do a few other things just to sort of keep busier and keep my brain going. So that's why I started making ornaments and doing decoupage and things like that. So that's how I got to be sort of eclectic with lots of stuff going on. So sometimes it's about me traveling places like road trips or cruises or camping or whatever. Um, could be my quilting, could be making ornaments, could be doing cards, whatever. Could be just us, could be the dogs. <laughs> it really Anything cool. goes. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of everything. So no yep. matter what your taste is, Kelly has something for you on her channel. So if you haven't checked it out, please head over once you've finished watching this and check out her channel because there's a good chance that she has something there that will, um, you know, that you would like to watch. So let's talk about your favorite quilt, which I believe you brought with you today. Yeah. And just tell us about your favorite quilt and just any story behind it and why it is your favorite. Well, I'm going to drop the camera down a little bit on the laptop and back out so you guys can see it a little bit. And then maybe I'll explain it after. Okay, that's fine. We'll be able to see all of it. This is the one I made. You can see that it's a jelly roll race. I'll zip it up here a little bit. Oh, it looks super pretty. Um, I did that one in 2017 because that year Canada was 150 years old. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was the Stonehenge Northcott line. They did a Canada conglomeration of it. I got the jelly roll of that and two sets of yardage because. I'm going to show you the applique. I did five applique maple leaves, I think. They, yeah, I saw the maple leaves on it. It was one of the first There's things. A little that... closer, sort of. Yeah, so they look beautiful. That same fabric from the maple leaves is what I did the binding with. And then okay. the back is this black and red dot. And that in the same year, there was also each fabric line for each of the provinces and territories. And I actually purchased the Alberta line and made a quilt for my aunt, but it's at her house in Calgary. So that was my second favorite. Nice. But that's why that one's my favorite because it has the most meaning. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that story. And it's, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have a couple of people from Canada. And I do remember the 150th anniversary back in 17 because in my day job, I work international shipping and do imports into Canada. That's what I handle. So I'm, um, yeah, I, I know a lot of the Canadian holidays and everything else. So um, we did some shipments for that and also for the Quebec. Um, I think they had a cel celebration as well. It may have been for the 150th because it was about that time frame. Yeah, Quebec usually does uh, Saint Jean Baptiste Day, which is the 24th of June. So they have their big thing there. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm, I really am happy that you um, joined us and shared that journey, um, shared that quilt with us. I love the black and the reds and everything else that you chose. And Norcott is one of my favorite fabric lines. Um, I've used their fabrics quite a few times on my quilts, and they've always been very, very bright and bold and beautiful fabrics. Um, I believe it's a Canadian company, correct? Yep. They, yes. They, um, they do some things for the U.S. too, because I was watching, there was actually a block of the month on now, and one of it's for Canada, one of it's for the, the States. I think it's on Northcott's YouTube channel. Okay, I'll have to go check that out. But yes, yeah, I've my local quilt shop stocks a lot of their fabrics, <laughs> and yeah, I grab it a lot of times. Like I don't shop exclusively one brand, but a lot of times I if I see it's Norcut, I I know it's gonna be pretty and it's gonna be a very a very nice fabric. So thank you so much for joining me, Kelly. It was a pleasure, and I hope we can do something again in the near future. 
and we will now move on to our next guest in the quilch. Okay, so my next guest is one that I've you've seen on the channel several times, more than likely. Um, I have been a big fan of Beth's ever since she started her channel earlier this year, and I'm just so thankful that she decided to come join us today. So say hi to everybody, Beth, and just let us know a little bit about yourself and your channel for anyone that may not have seen your channel yet. And if you haven't, definitely go over and check it out once you're done here. Hello, everybody. Uh, like Sean said, my name is Beth, and um, I'm into this whole quilting thing as much as everybody else is. It's really fun. Um, I do want to say thank you for inviting me to be part of this. Um, you've been one of my first friends from the very beginning on here, um, and I've always appreciated your like motivation and encouragement and support, so thanks for having me here. Um, I can't believe you're at a year congratulations that's so exciting you've hit some crazy milestones too i'm really proud of just watching your journey i'm motivated to keep going too um, okay. yeah <laughs> but my name's beth goody and so i have goody goods that's my sewing channel and i used to do videos but i kind of just do live videos now and um so whenever i get the chance when my kids are sleeping so that's about it <laughs> Yeah, and it's nice that you've evolved. Like, you know, I think we all start our YouTube journeys with a plan A in mind, and nine times out of 10, we've gone to plan B, because what I planned on doing is totally different to what, and then the podcast was always being like the, you know, meat and potatoes of my, and that's going to probably stay forever. But yeah, what I wanted to do is being totally different. I wasn't planning on doing lives, but um, I do them weekly now because that's what the viewers want, and that's that's why we're here. So um, the other reason we have you here today is to talk about your favorite quilt. And I'm excited for you to share this one because this one was a really cool one. So we'd like to show us your quilt and give us a little bit about why it's your favorite. And if you've got a cool story, share that as well. Yeah, I. Um, it's a pretty big one. It's 64 inches in diameter. So yes, it is a circle quilt, which is kind of fun and unusual. This is the only circle quilt I've ever made. Um, my first one and probably my only one. Um, I got to do some bias binding for the first time, so that was fun. But this is called the Color Wheel Quilt, and I made it earlier this year as a test for a pattern designer called Quarter Life Leap. And um, what I liked about it was it's very versatile. Um, you can start in the center of the pattern and change your colors going outward, or you can kind of do what I did where I just went around the circle and repeated each color twice but it was really fun to see the other testers kind of take an idea and make it completely their own and run with it um once we all gathered our pictures together and saw what everyone made we're like oh my gosh i never would have thought to do it like that so that's really cool about this pattern um i used all libs elliott fabric so we've got some phosphor all of these like solid colors are phosphor and then this white splattered, really cool fabric is called Beguiled. And I thought it was kind of fun color wheel quilt. It looks like paint just spilled all over this quilt. And um, I made it the backing because I loved it so much. So um, yeah, I just, I really loved it. It took about probably 30 hours to piece this one because each wedge, there's 24 color wedges. Each wedge took I mean, well over an hour to put together. And then the real challenge was at the very end when I had all of my pieces, this is all foundation paper piece, by the way. Um, but the challenge was at the very end when I had to piece the whole thing together because that means there is a really bulky center, almost like you needed to get a hammer and just smash it down. <laughs> um, but I think it ended out really well, my friend, long armed it for me because at the time I didn't have a long arm and we put malachite um, pantograph on it by urban elements so that pantograph is really fun it kind of looks like an oil spill as well just a lot of fun lines if you can tell um yep. but yeah this is my favorite quilt I put the most time in it I love the fabric I love how it makes me feel when I see it bright colorful happy um but I do not use this quilt <laughs> at all. It sits in our room on a quilt ladder um, because I put so much time into it. And that center seam where all that bulk is worries me if it gets 
you know, worn out over time, it could like combust. So I keep this one safe in our room. But yeah, that's my favorite one. <laughs> that's awesome. And I, I love how you mentioned the center of that because the only thing I've done similar to that would be the um, solar flare quilt that I did earlier this year. And that was, I think, eight pieces coming together. And that was tough enough. So I couldn't imagine doing the 24 that you did. So yeah, my hat's off to you that you actually um, successfully did that. And it looks really, really good. Like it's, yeah, it, from where I can see it, it, it's close enough to perfect for me. So yeah, well, well done. On that. I can imagine the hammer thing, like, you know. Yeah. I was sure. so worried. I was like telling my friend, this won't break your long arm, will it? Because I was so worried she was going to stitch over that center seam and her really fancy machine was just going to blow up or something. And I was like, I hope it doesn't break your machine. And so she ended up um, being a genius and she stitched around it. So there's no, no quilting going over that seam. She manipulated the pantograph around the center which was yeah. just genius. I never would have been able to do that, but it turned out really well. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Beth, for sharing that with us. Um, I loved hearing that story. And I, I remember seeing your pictures of that um, on YouTube, not yeah, YouTube and your Facebook group as well. So that was really, really neat to see. So thank you so much for sharing it. And um, we will now move on to our next guest. But if you haven't checked out Beth's channel, please do so. She has a lot of fun stuff. Her lives are always great. So check those out when she is able to do so. And um, I, yeah, just thank you once again for joining me, Beth. And we'll move on to our next guest. <laughs> Bye. I'm very excited to have my next guest join me. It's Lisa from the Beehive Buzz. And I've been watching her channel for a while. I don't get over it as often as I want to, but you know, there's so many great content creators out there and just not enough hours in the day, unfortunately. But would you like to tell us a little bit, bit about yourself and about your channel? Because I'd love to hear more about it. Sure. Thanks, Sean. And, you know, you actually get credit for my channel because I saw how brave you were about starting your channel and inspired me to go ahead and go with some of my ideas. So thank you for that. So Hi, my channel is just your basic sewing. I quilt. I do some garment sewing. I do some little projects. Um, it's also about family life. Um, I have seven children. Um, some of them don't live at home anymore. <laughs> Back uh, when they all did live at home, it was before YouTube became so popular and I actually had a blog online, but the videos that I take are mostly about family adventures. We like to go camping. We like to go do things in our community. So it's a bit of a mix and match of content, really. <laughs> awesome. And if you haven't checked out Lisa's channel, which is the Beehive Buzz, I'll put the, description, uh, the link in the description below as I will everybody else. Definitely go check it out because she has a lot of fun stuff and yeah, I, I think you really will enjoy it. But the other reason we came here today is to um, talk about our favorite quilts and Lisa has it there behind her and I'd love her to explain about her favorite quilt and the fun story behind it. So this quilt is one of my favorites because when I first started quilting hmm, a long time ago, um, I only learned the basics, which was fine. My grandmother gave me some of the skills. And then we moved out of state to New York and I made a friend there who is a quilter. And she had this amazing book that she in turn gave to me because she wasn't using it anymore. It's called Pairing Up. And it's got mashups of different blocks. And you can see the secondary patterns forming in the quilt behind me. That's very interesting. And most quilters love that sort of thing. The pattern from this book that I used is Mulberry Road. And it uses two different blocks. One is called uh, New England and the other one is called Round the Corner. I chose um, Christmas fabrics when I first started it because I always envisioned it being finished and on my bed. Um, but like most quilters, you start a project for yourself and then a family member shows up and says, oh, can you make me and fill in the blank? And then you, of course you do it because quilters like to make things for other people who will appreciate them. So I have the front and the back done and now I just got to decide how to quilt it. But it was the first quilt I ever did that did two different patterns together to make that secondary pattern. And I just fell in love with that process. These days I tend to do more of the quick quilts. Um, a lot of the Miss Missouri Star Quilt Company where you cut up like um, 
uh, the different blocks, like the hourglass block, and then you put it together different ways. And then when you put the whole quilt together, you can see more of those secondary patterns. I just right. think that's amazing and fun. And depending on what fabric you use, you get different patterns. So, yeah. but that's why this is my favorite quilt because of all of that. It kind of introduced me to that world of secondary patterns. So now I just need to finish it. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you, you and me both, I have so many quilt tops that I need to do. And I think that's gotta be something I need to do in 2023. But I love yeah. that mashup idea. And that's the book is something I really need to go check into because I think I'd have a lot of fun with that. Um, especially with my bright and bold um, fabric choices. Yeah. So I do appreciate you um, mentioning that and showing us the book because I think that would be a lot of fun for a lot of us. You know, we're always looking for new ideas and that was something I was hoping to get um, from this project, which, you know, we definitely succeeded. Um, do you have any other um, last words or anything else that you want to mention about this or do you get it? About the quote? Do you mean about the quote? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely one of the things that, uh, the other thing I love about the quilt is with all the little triangles and the and the squares, you can do some really fun quilting. And I do all my quilting either by hand, which not so much these days, but on my domestic machine, which is <laughs> behind you. Um, right. This other one is my piecing machine. But you can do like the orange peels around the edges and stuff like that. It just lends itself to some really fun quilting, which I'm really looking forward to. And that's why I haven't done it yet, because usually there's, oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. I want to sit down and spend some time with it and just have that opportunity to just really think it through and do something beautiful. My goal is to get it done in time for the state fair in August. Nice. Yeah. And please keep us updated on that. We'd love to see um, the progress and the finish of that. And yeah, definitely um, would love to see how you do in the state fair and that as well. So thank you so much for joining me, Lisa. It was a pleasure having you here on the channel. And, you know, I'm sure we'll see you again in the future. And yep. we'll now move on to our next guest. Thank you. Our next guest is another gentleman quilter. His name is Dave. And his channel name is Dave's Craft Room. I discovered him through YouTube recommendations about a month ago. And so I reached out to him and asked him if he was going to be uh, able to join me on this little project. And he happily agreed. So would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and your um, channel, Dave, since I've um, don't know that a lot of my viewers would have met you yet. Greetings all, I'm Dave from Dave's Craft Room. Uh, I'm originally from Pennsylvania and um, I've been quilting for about six or seven years. My mom taught me how to quilt so that I could make a t-shirt quilt and that's really it. And so what sort of things do you do on your channel? I make quilts, I like to make, um, videos of a complete quilt from start to finish so that's mainly what my videos are okay so you're more a tutorial based channel kind of or it's kind of like just like come along for the journey okay and i like to try like different things and just make whatever interesting things i can think of nice i think a lot of my viewers will enjoy that so yeah definitely if you um if this sounds interesting to you um, definitely head over to Dave's Craft Room on YouTube and check out his channel because I've, I mean, I've watched a, quite a few of his videos so far and I've really enjoyed it and I think you guys will as well. So let's now move on to our favorite quilt and off camera we talked about it and you've shown us this and we just tell us a little bit more about this quilt, what it is and why it's your favorite. Okay, so this is a quilt. <laughs> this is a... Um, <laughs> This quilt I made for my friend's wedding, my friends Alex and Melissa. Um, they had a whole pandemic wedding situation, like marriage that is to say. So then now after the fact, they can do their actual wedding ceremony now that people can get together. And so I made them this, there's, you know, the wedding quilt, um, some people make the double wedding ring. So I didn't really feel a double wedding ring vibration for them. So this is kind of my take on it. There's rings kind of going in and out. And um, this technique that I use is by a woman called Louisa Smith. You have, um, you make panels out of one and a half inch strips. Every other one, like you can see it here probably best. And um, you use that as your fabric and you cut curves out of it with templates and then you piece the curves. I also pieced, I learned how to piece circles 
into the quilt. So then whatever that circle you cut out, you know, to piece it in, you have to cut out a circle, then I applicate those circles on elsewhere. So it's kind of, you know, rings inside of rings and on top and everything. And then I applicate airplanes on. And it's no. my favorite because I love the colors. It's stunning. I made it for Alex and Melissa. I'm going to mail it to them very soon after I film this. So hopefully they like it. I think they are going to like it. I think so. I mean, it's it's so different to anything else that I've ever seen. It's so unique. I love the colors and the design and everything else you put into it. And I'll, I didn't realize that they were one and a half inch strips. Um, I just think that's absolutely fantastic. And um, I'm a huge um, aviation geek, especially with like passenger and cargo aircraft. So the fact that it's aircraft is just, you know, it gives it an extra extra mark for me as well. So I am I, I absolutely love this thing. It's so, so different. And I think a lot of the viewers watching today will definitely think the same thing as well. So, you know, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I did film it. The video is not out yet, but the video of making this will come out in the new year. So you can see that on the next craft room. All right. I will definitely head over and check that out. And I'm sure a lot of other folks will do that as well. Um, do you have any final words or anything else that you'd like to add to this? Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it's only, well, yeah, when this airs, it's actually going to be Christmas Eve. And um, so, yeah, I keep forgetting because I'm recording this a few weeks early. So thank you very much, Dave, for joining me today. And we will now move on to our next presenter. Okay, so my next guest is Danny from So Not An Expert, and she has been on my channel before. She was with me a couple of weeks ago with the So Sweet Project. I'm very excited to have her back. So Danny, tell us a bit about your channel. What sort of things do you do on your channel? Do you do lives? Do you do pre-records, a mix? What sort of things do you have to offer your viewers? Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me, Sean. I really appreciate it. Um, our channel is mainly project-based, um, but the projects usually span out of multiple videos or multiple live streams, things like that. But I do have some tutorial videos as well, and I'm starting to get a little bit more into that. That's my goal for 2023 is to actually get more into the tutorial videos because I really love that part of the creation process. I'm not nearly as creative as a lot of the cre content creators on here. I can't really come up with my own quilt designs and things like that. I have to rely more on patterns, at least for right now, because I'm still learning quite a bit. So the tutorial videos are a little bit more um, easier for me to record. And I really love sharing all the things that I'm learning with all of my subscribers and, and any of the other people there on YouTube. So that's really what our channel is about. Like you said, we do live streams on Sunday mornings, which is so much fun. We usually do a lot of large scale projects there, the full size quilts, and we start them from the very, very beginning from ironing up the fabrics and cutting them all the way to the very end with regards to putting the binding on. So those projects can span up quite a few weeks, but I don't do the same thing every week. I try and rotate around what we're doing. So one, one week, it might be one type of quilt. The next week, it'll be a different one. The third one, it might be something miscellaneous and fun because I get bored really easily. So I just assume that my subscribers get bored really easily. So I like to change it up uh, quite a bit. Right now, we have a couple of full-size projects in the works that we're working on. One of them were we're nearing the end of and the other one we just recently started and then I've got the block party videos that have been coming out once a month we do a tutorial video on a brand new block that I'm picking from a book that I have here those are a lot of fun so I'm learning a lot of new techniques and things to do and I love sharing those with everybody yes that's great and I, I'm a regular viewer of your channel and your lives whenever I can and it's a lot of fun and the thing I like about your lives is the um games that you can play like your <laughs> that sort of thing there so yeah, if you haven't checked out danny's channel definitely head over whenever you get a chance and check out what she has to offer i think you'll really really enjoy it so let's now move on to um your favorite quilt because everybody i've brought on i've asked to talk about your favorite quilt i'm going to put a picture of it up because she has given this quilt away to a loved one so tell us a bit more about your quilt and um, why it's your favorite so the quilt that we're talking about now is the Rainbow Bargello. It's a king size quilt, which is the largest one that I have ever made. And I, it's probably the largest one I will ever make again because it was a struggle. Um, that quilt was only the second full size quilt I had ever made. Um, before that, I made a twin size Irish chain. And then I got the bright idea to make this Rainbow Bargello quilt. It was a gift for my sister for her wedding to her husband a couple of years ago. It took me almost a year and a half 
to make the entire thing from start to finish because I'm a weekend warrior. I only do my quilting on the weekends. Um, and that bar jello was a test of all of the skills that I had not yet acquired. <laughs> <laughs> the Bargello is still one of the ones that is a real challenge for me. I've done other videos on my channel since then of smaller Bargellos, and I still struggle with them because of all of those seams. But it's one of those ones where it is amazing to watch it come together. You know, you start out with these long strips, you cut them up, and then you put them all back together. And it's just so much fun to watch the whole thing come together uh, little by little and how it actually steps up in the, the process. So yeah, that one that one was a labor of love and, and probably some pins and, and, and <laughs> things too. I used to joke that every time I'd have to pull a thread out or something, because I used variegated thread with that one, because I didn't really know what color thread to use, because I was still kind of learning what to use. So I used a, a variegated thread along with the multicolor fabric. So every time I had to pull Jack out, it was like a unicorn had thrown up all over me. <laughs> it was just multicolored threads and fabric all over me. It was a mess, but it was a lot of fun to put together. And it turned out beautifully. My sister has no idea the amount of work that went into it or the amount of stress, um, but she cherishes it and it's currently on her bed in her home. That is awesome. And it's always nice when quilts that you make are actively used all the time. That's always one thing I tell my recipients is please use the quilts. So thank you. Absolutely. So thank you so much for um, sharing that story with us. I love hearing each and every story. And I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. Thank you again for letting me. My pleasure. And we'll now move on to our next guest. This is a very familiar face. It is Becca from the So Becca channel, and I'm very excited to have her with us. And um, for the, any viewers that may be here that might not know who you are, um, would you like to introduce yourself and just let us know a little bit about your channel? Sure. My name is Becca. I have a small YouTube channel called So Becca. I do unboxings of some sewing subscription boxes. I like to do tips and tricks when I find something that works for my brain. I've been doing some sew alongs, but I think what most people probably know me for is the Friday night live streams that I do. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> okay. And you say you're a small channel compared to what, Mr. Beast? Uh, <laughs> uh, compared to pretty much. <laughs> Let's redo that one. I feel like I'm a small channel. Like it's it. I have my eyes set on some pretty big channels, and compared to them, I feel like I'm just a fish in the pond, right? So like when I'm thinking about Fat Quarter Shop or Missouri Star or Mr. Beast or Mark Rober, or some of the channels that I watch religiously, yeah, I'm just a drop in the bucket. I know. I I, I had to I had to say something there. I mean, if you're a small <laughs> fish in the pond, I guess I'm like plankton. But you know. No, gosh, I didn't mean it that way. I am so sorry. No, no. I just. I just I, yeah. No, I, I didn't mean it that way at all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Fine. I, I just thought I'd. You know, you have a good sense of humor, so I thought I'd give you a hard time about that. <laughs> um, but the reason we're here is that we're doing a quilt trunk show, and I've asked you along with others to talk about your favorite quilt and you were able to get it down to two well, right yeah but if you're asking for somebody asking a quilter for their favorite quilt you might have a hard time <laughs> narrowing it down to even two I would argue yeah. that almost any quilt that walks out of my studio is probably my favorite at that point in time <laughs> but there are that. two there are two that are near and dear to my heart the first yeah. quilt is a quilt that I sleep with literally every night. And it's gone a little beyond that. When I travel, the quilt goes with me too. <laughs> I had never had a quilt before I had this one. Every time I made a quilt, it was always gifted to somebody else. And there wasn't a quilt that I got to keep until I made this one. This is a quilt that I did following Corey Yoder's Block of the Month program. It's called Springbrook Blossoms. I did them on live streams way back when, really old videos. But she's got a free pattern on her website, CoryAnderQuilts.com, that you can grab the pattern for this quilt for. I didn't know what fabric I wanted to use for it. And I reached out of my comfort zone and I pulled a fat quarter bundle of this beautiful ombre fabric from Vianco for Moda Fabrics. And the motion and texture that those ombre fabrics added to the flowers just made it absolutely stunning. None of the points match up, 
I've got chopped off points, I've got misaligned points, but it's finished and it's super cuddly and it's super pretty and I'm not going to give it away. So that's one of my favorite quilts. Excellent. Yeah. And I just love hearing the stories behind this and it doesn't matter if it's perfect, you know, um, as long as you're happy with it and you enjoy it, which you do, that's all it really matters at the end of the day. That's absolutely and, right. Yeah. And then you mentioned you had a second one. Yeah, so the second one is definitely a lot better quality. This is a quilt that I collabed with Tucker from Tucker Sewing and Quilting on. I pieced the top and he quilted it for me and it is just stunning. It's hanging up in my studio. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's featuring the spring chicken line from Sweetwater Fabrics for Moda. It's using the New Year's star pattern from Jordan Fabrics. This was a kit that I got from a quilt shop for a retreat. Unfortunately, I got sick. I wasn't able to go to the retreat, but they did send me the quilt kit and the pattern and I put it together in the course of a weekend and I didn't know what to do with it because I was so meticulous about trying to keep all of my points lined up that I was scared to quilt this. So it sat on my shelf for a very long time waiting to be quilted. And then I decided who better to quilt this than Tucker. His work is amazing. So yes, we collabed is. on it. I sent it up to him. He, I just told him basic guidelines. I wanted it quilted to death because I would love to enter it one day in a quilt show. So he did that and sent it back. And I'm, I, 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 I'm beyond, I have no words. I have no words. It's gorgeous. I love the colors. I love the fabric. I love the quilting job that he did. And it's kind of funny because when you just see the fabric and you see the quilting on it, it you don't even pay attention to the piecing. The piecing is so distant. It's the quilting that makes that come to life. Yeah. And because like you said, Tucker just does such an amazing job with everything he, he does. He just has a talent. And he's so young, like, you know, mm. in 10 years when he's 27 or whatever it is, he's going to be like, yeah, world famous. So yeah, yep. He's done another quilt for me too. Uh, I guess I'm going to talk about a third one really quick. But he did the quilting on my Monica quilt. So this was a really, really easy to do quilt. It was just two different fabrics, basically sewn into four patches. So it kind of represents a checkered pattern. Really, really easy to do. I put that together and had an idea of how I wanted to quilt it, but I challenged him to do it. And what he did brought even that quilt to life. Like if you, yeah. if your quilting can bring a simple four patch quilt to life and make it speak, that's just amazing. Yes. It just works great. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't mention that one. So, but I'm, so I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah. I had forgotten about it until I started talking about Tucker. <laughs> He's, he's a good kid. I, I, I love him dearly. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me on this segment. Um, it's been a pleasure having you and back on the channel again. And um, yeah, we'll definitely do some stuff in the future. So thank you. And we'll now move on to our next guest. Okay. So our next guest is Adam Sos. And a lot of you guys probably know him already, but if you don't, he is a quilter based in the UK. And I'm very excited to have him join us on board today. So we'd like to introduce yourself, Adam, and just tell us a little bit more about yourself and your channel. Yeah, so my name is Adam. Um, my channel is Adam Sews. I am mainly a quilter and bag maker, but I do make garments as well. Um, I post on a weekly basis on under the hashtag Friday Sews, which is just sort of a general roundup each week of what I've been up to that week. Um, and... If I can basically, the way I look at sewing is if I can fit it through a machine, I'll have a go at it. That's awesome. And I, I, I don't get to check out the channel as much as I want to because there's so many great content creators out there. But I, every time I do get to see it, I love your content. So if you haven't checked out that content, um, definitely check it out. And if you like my accent, which I get all the time, you're definitely going to love Adam's as well. So, you know, that's just an extra bonus point for him. So um, let's go ahead and talk about your favorite quilt. And I believe you brought it with you today. Um, tell us, you know, show it to us and just tell us a bit about why it's your favorite. And if you've got a cool story behind it, um, we'd love to hear that as well. Right. So this is one of my, it's one of the first quilts I ever made. And it's the reason why it's my favorite is because it is the first time I actually braved digging into my Tudor sash and actually using all of the um, different cameos and stuff because I've been too scared that I was going to just mess up the fabric and it was the first time I just thought you know what it's just fabric mm -hmm. 
You can always um, buy more. Exactly. You can always buy more. Um, and it is the first time as well that I've ever done a scrappy binding. So the whole binding is just made up from all of the two and a half inch scraps, mainly from the um, what was left over from building the um, borders around the blocks. Yeah, I just love that. And I know a lot of my viewers are Tula fans. So, I mean, you've probably got um, dozens of ladies and gentlemen right now um, salivating over this quilt. So if you want to show us another close-up of it, I'm sure they would not um, disapprove one bit and probably thank you for that. Yeah, so there's I some of it as well. I, I also embroidered with some of the embroidery stitches. I embroidered some of the different words from it. So like it's got Alice embroidered on it here and then it's got eat me and drink me and the different border parts of it. So part of the, so when I actually quilted some of it, I actually used the embroidery stitches to actually quilt some of the parts of it. Yeah, I just love that. I mean, I've seen that print, you know, on different quilts and that sort of thing on Instagram and Facebook and um, other social media platforms. And it's um, it just always looks stunning. And I think you did such a great job. You have a great eye for color on that. I love I love bright and bold colors on a quilt. Yeah. So that's definitely up my wheelhouse. And the scrappy binding I've done once or twice. And I, I really should do it more often because I always love the effect of a scrappy binding. So I love that you join that into it as well. Because to me, it, it just polishes that quilt off so nicely. Thank you. Um, so do you have any final words or anything else that you want to add to this? Um, I would, I think the, the, the lesson behind that quilt is if you've got fabric that you've been hoarding for ages because you're too scared to cut it, just cut it. Because you will love what you make with it, no matter how, whether there's mistakes or anything with it. You know what, thank you for saying that because I am guilty as much as the next person on that. Um, I don't know that it's the, I'm scared to cut into it. I just haven't found the right project for, but you know, I, I, I love that advice on that as well. So um, again, thank you um, for joining me and sharing that quilt. As I said, you've probably got people salivating already over this one. It's just such a beautiful quilt. And um, if you haven't checked out Adam's channel, please do so. He does a lot of fun stuff and um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So we'll now move on to our next guest. Thanks for joining us again, Adam. Thank you. Guest is my friend Dawn from My Quilt Project, and she's been on the channel once before, and I'm so excited to have it come back and join me once more for this project. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know, Dawn is actually the one that um, inspired this whole project, and I'm so excited about that. So would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel and what your channel has for us? Well, my name is Dawn, and I've been quilting religiously since about 96 or so, 94, 96. Um, and as I progress in, in my skills, I become faster at what I do. So a quilt in a year and a half is now a quilt maybe once a month. Uh, um, to refine my skills, uh, the department that I work in at my job, um, I have a lot of young people that I work with and they would be expecting parents. And so I decided to hone my free motion quilting. And I knew that I could piece a top but I wanted to hone that and, and create um, quilts because, you know, babies don't care about perfection. They don't care about color. They just want, they want to be fed and put to sleep and the diaper changed. And so I knew that the parents would probably be really, really accepting of such a wonderful uh, gift item. And so I, I've refined my skills by practice and, um, I decided that I'd start blogging. So I have a blog, um, myquiltprojects.wordpress.com. I've been blogging now for eight years and I may give a tutorial. I may give a link to show you what can be done. I may um, coordinate with my YouTube channel, which I do also have a YouTube channel, um, My Quilt Projects. Um, I, I can, do a visual on the camera, or I can take a photo, because sometimes a photo is worth a thousand words, or I can actually add text to it on the blog. That's what I like about blogging. Um, yeah, I have I am a scrappy quilter, and very rarely do I just take one piece of fabric and it's all in the quilt uh, for the background or whatever. Normally, um, I'm, I'm using up all kinds of scraps, all different sizes. It could be yardage. It could be little bitty two inch squares that I've salvaged from another project. So um, yeah, 
that that's me and my channel my channel um has things like maintenance um how to clean your wool mat um i'm trying to think of something else i've put out there um i will be putting out uh, machine uh, question and answers. Um, if you're having a problem with your machine, I've become skilled enough on those on any machine really that I can try and troubleshoot what kind of problem you're having and try and help you fix it. Look for that content to be coming uh, within this month. Um, yeah, most of it's long arm videos. Um, I will take and build like a Adidas sitar mystery quilt or a Bonnie Hunter mystery quilt. And then I will show you how to quilt it. I have a lot of those videos. So check those out. Those are, those are my big videos in the past that have got lots and lots of views. So. Yeah. And definitely check out her channel. Um, she did a churn dash recently, which was really good. And as she said, um, as Dawn said, she um, is more than happy to help you out if you have any issues with your sewing machine. So definitely reach out to her as that resource and she's gonna do more of that in the near future. But the other reason we're here today is that we um, are talking about our favorite quilts and Dawn is gonna tell us about her favorite quilts. So would you like to show us or tell us about your favorite quilt and if you have a cool story behind it and why, why it's your favorite? This has quite a story. Um, <laughs> so this quilt I made between 2000 and I'm, I'm thinking 2004 to 2006 I was extremely poor I was the only one working I had two car payments a house payment and I had my son who was still uh he was still going to the babysitters so I didn't have any money and this was relatively new um eBay and so I come across, I was always looking at eBay to see if I could find a real good buy to where I could get something for a little bit of nothing. And it would give me great pleasure in finding something like that. Well, I found this kit for $6 and all of the squares were already cut. And it was not, it was like a hat box full of squares. And then it had some strips, some of these strips and this, this quilt um, we have used and abused, but the it's not really my favorite quilt, but the journey of this quilt means the most to me. Um, I got divorced in 2006, and I originally made this for my ex-husband. And during the divorce, I asked for this quilt and was told it was to be, to be given to me, and it never happened. Well, it did happen, but it didn't happen right away. Um, the reason why I got divorced is because my ex-husband became addicted to whatever drugs he was on. I think it started with prescription drugs and then it turned into harder stuff. And that was the reason why I was so poor. He hid it from me. I never understood why we didn't have any money. Even though I was the only one controlling the money, he would figure out a way to intercept the mail for the overdraft notices on the checking account where he was constantly every three days writing a check for like $30 for cash. And so when I divorced, I because of his drug problem, when I found out, it scared the bejesus out of me. And so I left everything behind with my son and we just left with the clothes on our back. And this quilt represents the struggles that we all face. Um, I actually got this quilt back. And this really makes me mad. I wouldn't, I didn't really want this quilt back because it was his. But he also took my grandmother's quilt. So my grandmother was a quilter, but she she didn't do it all the time. She might have had three quilts in the house. I have two of the three. Um, it was a simple nine patch. It was probably made in the 50s. Um, and it was a tied quilt. So there was probably lots of wool layers in between. It was a very weighted, heavy blanket. And one day I had met someone else, moved on. Um, one day I go to get the mail or whatever, and I see a trash bag on our front step. And I open it up. 
and this quilt was in there as well as my grandmother's quilt. I tried to save my grandmother's quilt. The quilts were wet. I don't know what happened to them. Um, no clue, but they were not taken care of. It, it, the, my grandmother's quilt had mildewed and let's be, let's face it, it was an older quilt, so it couldn't really take a bunch of abuse and it disintegrated. And so um, the reason why I'm showing this quilt is because this represents the struggles that we all go through, whether it's getting your tension right on your, your quilting machine or your sewing machine, or whether it's getting your points perfect. I think this was my actual third quilt that I had ever had quilted and my points were pretty good. Um, it was a very easy pattern and because it was only $6, I could afford to sew it. And when there's a will, there's a way. I probably grew exponentially as a person because I didn't have money, but I still wanted to produce something, you know, that I could use. And that was like a turning point in my life where I realized that the chase of all of the stuff that we chase, we, we bother chasing icons of, of name brand stuff. And I realized that it's really not that important that what's important is the utilitarian object of what you're trying to get. Um, and so all of my quilts get used and I do want to discuss one more thing on this quilt. This quilt I had taken to my local long armor. Um, I was kind of stymied by my local long armor because she didn't do very much. Um, she didn't do any customization. At the time she was doing a little bit of pantographs and this one was like a, a motif in each one of the blocks. Um, because of her not venturing out of her boundaries, it made me a better quilter because it pushed me into the direction that I needed to go. I needed to figure out how to do it myself. This, this quilt has so much uh, of me in it and it pushed me in the direction of where I am today. And um, this quilt means the world to me. And as you can see, um, let me find a spot. Um, it's pretty, pretty bare in spots. And this was another thing that I learned after the fact. My long armor used 100% polyester batting and it gave it nice loft and it's nice and warm. But at the same time, polyester batting acts as a Brillo pad on cotton fabrics. So it's probably best for longevity and for, um, um, aesthetic if you used a cotton based batting with a little bit of polyester in it. Um, if I would have known that whenever I, I had this quilted, this quilt such a ragged state. We have used it, so I'm I'm not gonna lie. I mean the 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 batting or the binding on it is just totally frayed. Um, and it's just since 2000. I, I know that I got this quilt back probably in 2008. I don't know how many times it had been washed, but it did not, it was not taken care of. And um, yeah, the, the batting's showing through and it's just really threadbare. And I really don't want to get rid of this quilt because it does have so much history for me on, I mean, it, this, this quilt is, this is me now. I mean, I am a different person now because of what pivoted around this quilt. And I will say that luckily I had two other quilts. I had a grandmother's flower garden and a drunkard's path, both that were very labor intensive quilts. They were at the long armors when I left with the clothes on my back. So I actually still have those quilts as well that were not involved in the divorce, so to speak. Um, the, this, this quilt is, it, it's not necessarily my favorite or it's not necessarily the most beautiful anymore, but it means the most to me because I, it's this, the idea of this pushed me in the direction that I needed to be. And it actually gave me guidance, if you can believe that. It actually, 
each day um, when I was poor, I would sew just, you know, a nine patch. And um, I, I would reflect on what we were going to have for supper that day because I might have had flour. I might have had um, some chicken and some peas. And I had to figure out how, what am I going to make with this? Because, I mean, you're very limited. We were so poor, I couldn't afford diapers for my son. Um, I never, ever asked anyone for help. Um, I made it through. And for those of you out there struggling um, with money, because I know money is tight for so many people, hang in there, be patient, don't rush into anything. When you find, save, save just a few cents a week, you can, you can do it. Um, I couldn't even find spare change in the house. If I, if I ended up like having to go to the store to, to buy something like toilet paper or whatever, I might've had a quarter left over. I put it in my change bucket and it wouldn't be there the next day. It'd be gone. We only yeah. had pennies in the house. So um, as somber as this story is, it's not, it's not, I'm, I'm a better person because of all this transpiring. So I'm glad that it all happened and I am where I am today. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining up. Uh, but sharing that story, I mean, it's it's always great to hear the happy stories behind quilts, but I also really appreciate you coming on and telling us this story because, like you said, I'm sure this is going to resonate and relate to somebody, whether yeah. it's today or someone watching this six months from now. So thank you so much for joining me with this and sharing this story with us. I mean, like you look at a quilt and you always see the, the beautiful fabrics and the, you know, the love and the you know like the use i love seeing quilts getting used and so that's me but you know without you sharing that story i would have had no clue that it meant so much to you and the reason why and i'm so glad that you were able to share that with us you know i'm sure it was difficult but i do really appreciate you doing that for me thank so, you for having me sean this is um this has been nice i i pondered what what quilt to show and i was like well this is the oldest one i have that i that I have here at the house. I could go get one of my first quilts that's got for my mom. I, I gave them a quilt that all my points are chopped off and everything. And it shows me how far I've become as a quilter. But I thought this one actually pushed me in the right direction. And it it really tells the, the story. I, I knew I could tell the story of this quilt better than I could tell the others. Yeah, and I so appreciate that. So Thank you again for joining me, and we will now move on to our next guest. So our next guest here is Kelly from Highway on, sorry, I always get this wrong. Okay, I'm going to start this again in three, two, one. Okay, so our next guest is Kelly from the Farm on Highway J. She has been on YouTube for a few months, I believe, and I thought it'd be really good to have her join us. And um, so would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself and your channel, Kelly? Sure, yeah. So I'm actually originally from Northern Illinois, but I live down in Northern Missouri now. And most of my family is actually still back in Northern Illinois. My folks and I moved down here to be closer to my brother and his family, but all of our extended family is back in Illinois. And so I bought this house last year and we were getting ready to have my niece's wedding this year. And I knew that some of my family would be coming down to visit and to see where we live and all that but I knew that a lot of them would probably never really come down here. I'd always be going up back to all my extended family there. And so over the summer, I was kind of thinking, why don't, why don't we do a couple videos of, you know, we're starting an apple orchard, we're building a chicken coop, we're doing this, we're doing that. Why don't we just, you know, go ahead and post a couple of those on YouTube. Well, then I started seeing all the other quilt, and I've always seen all the other quilting channels and that, and I thought, you know, I could do a few of those. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how my channel started, less less business like and more just wanting to be build a community kind of a thing. And Which, um, I do have some projects in the works, you know, to to kind of put out some patterns and things like that. But that's basically how it started. Is just every once in a while I might throw in a recipe, and most of the time I'm going to be quilting over the winter, and come spring I'm going to be doing a garden. <laughs> so. Thanks. Yeah. And that's what I like about your channel is that you have a little bit of everything. Um, it's predominantly quilting based, but there is those other yeah. cool things, um, especially since you live in that little farm of yours, little which area. I think yeah. so it appeals to a lot of different audiences, which I think is great. 
Um, so let's talk about your favorite quilt. Um, do you have one and which one is it and why is it special to you? So I'm probably one of those quilters that the ones that I make, like my favorite one is probably the next one that I'm thinking about, or the one that I'm, I just started, the one that I'm, or the next one that I'm thinking about. But in terms of sentimental value, I actually kind of have it in the background here. This is actually my baby quilt. <laughs> oh, nice. So it's a, it was just a um, regular old Raggedy Ann quilt from the 70s. But I still have it, you know, and it's not really made by anybody in my family. Nobody in my family does quilting, but okay. my mom still remembers who it was at the church that they attended that made it for me and, and this and that. So I, I really like the sentimental value sometimes of quilts and um, just, you know, just being able to make something that people are going to think about for years, you know, or keep the baby oh, warm kind of stuff. <laughs> absolutely. And I think us, all, a lot of us as quilters want that longevity out of the mm -hmm. product. So it's neat that Yep. It came from the 70s, which is, you know, 40 some yeah. years ago. Um, exactly. <laughs> it's, it still looks great in great condition. So, yep. And, and it's actually very simple. It was a very simple, like she literally just cut out raggedy ends and the Andes and, and applicate them on there and then tied it. <laughs> that was so the quilts can be so simple and they can be so complicated. It just mm -hmm. depends on your mood and what you want to do. So I do uh, have a few that I've done that. I like the one behind me actually is probably one that I I love the pattern on. It was a I forget the, the name of the designer, but it's sewing related. And I yeah. just always love that. I don't know that my sewing was so expert, but <laughs> I loved the design and fabrics and all that. So And that's okay. Like um finish is better than perfect. We I, I say mm -hmm. that a lot on my channel. And um I treat every quilt as as an a learning experience as well. Yep. Um, and it's funny that you said that the quilt that you're currently making is your favorite. Mm -hmm. um, you are yep. not alone in that. Um, that yep. happens to me a lot. And I, the people I've spoken to over the last um, couple of weeks in different things say the same basic thing. So I think a lot of us think that way. Yep. Well, and I think like the one that I'm currently making and, and maybe I've been working on it for a little while. So now I'm kind of, I like it, but hey, what if I do this next time or, you know, um, just like double wedding, like suddenly I get into the mood. I want to do a double wedding in quilts or mm -hmm. I want to try that pattern. Or I watched Tiffany on Tiffany's Quilting Life and she literally had a um, charm pack the other day. And I'm like, I saw that when I was moving some things around on my shelf. I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you, oh, know? So, you know, huge inspiration. Get that inspiration. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time, Kelly. That I loved hearing your story and hearing a little bit more about the Raggedy Ann quilt. I love hearing the stories behind the quilts and especially the ones that have been around that for a while. Um, if you haven't checked out Kelly's channel, please do so. She'd love to have you. Um, like every, everybody else, she'd like to see the likes and the comments and the subscribers. So definitely check out her channel. I'll put the um, this link in the description below. And we'll now move on to the, our, our next guest. So my next guest is a regular appearance on my channel and my good friend Stephen Bland and I'm so excited that he was able to join us here um, in this little project so Stephen for anyone that doesn't know who you are um, let us know a little bit about yourself and your channel okay well I am the idiot quilter why do I call myself that and my channel that because when I started doing this channel I was just starting out in quilting and I was making a lot of really stupid mistakes. And guess what? I still do. So I like to share those mistakes with other people to show them that, yes, you're going, you're never going, you're not going to be perfect every time. And I show you how I handled those mistakes. And that could be anywhere from what I call fudging it to, um, well, doing something that's really bizarre and the quilt police will arrest me for it. And so that's what my channel is all about. I am a retired English high school teacher uh, as well. I've been retired for about 10 years and this is my major hobby, but I used to do paper crafting, scrapbooking, art journaling. I've always been a creative. So this is just a natural extension to that. That's awesome. And the thing I love about your channel is that you have so many different things. So there's really something out there for everybody. So if you haven't checked out Stephen's channel, please do so. I'm gonna drop the link into the description and the chat as well so definitely check it out because it's going to be something there that you enjoy i'm sure 
So the other reason we're here today is to talk about our favorite quilt. And Steve, um, Stephen, you had a really, really cool quilt that you got to show us and a really neat story. So would you like to tell us about that? Yep, I'm just going to share my screen so you can see a picture of it. Okay. Okay, is it there for you? Yes. Okay, this is not my quilt. This quilt comes from the late 70s. It was made by my grandmother uh, for me. She made five of these quilts all in the same style, one for each of her grandchildren. And I hate the colors. I love the quilt. I do not like the colors. This is not in my wheelhouse of colors, but it was made by my grandmother. So, you know, it has a place of honor in my home. Well, it did. In my first house, I had a place where I could hang it on a wall. In this house, which I've been in now for almost 28 years, I had no place to hang it. It didn't go with my decor. It sat in a closet for years and years and years. But it's all hand done, uh, all hand pieced, um, and all hand quilted as well. So when I was cleaning out my mother's house, when she went into a nursing home a few years ago, um, I found my grandmother's original templates for this. And this is what she did. She did not have a pattern. She grew out this grid line on a piece of cardboard. And uh, you can see her writing at the top of it, making notes for herself. She colorized it. And if you see, the quilt is made up of, she called it a, a Moorish, was the name of the quilt. That's what she named it. Um, this was Drunkard's Path. Most of these blocks are Drunkard's Path. Well, they're all Drunkard's Path in two colors. And so she probably had cardboard templates for cutting those out as well, which I never did find, but I found this. So I got thinking about it. You know, I think I want to recreate this, but in my color scheme and using 21st century technology. So I did. And this is my version of it. So blues and purples are my favorite colors. So I recreated it from her sketch. You notice I got rid of the prairie points because nothing says oldish person like prairie points, in my opinion. I just never into prairie points. And uh, so, yeah, I used modern technology to um, recreate it. I had, uh, I, and I didn't use templates on this. And you can't really tell in the picture, but if you look at the, some of the little circles, there looks like there's a satin stitch around them. And that's because there is. I used a special attachment for my sewing machine that creates circles. It's a really cool little device. Most sewing machines you can get one of these for. You can set it for the size you want. I put in a square of cotton, did a circle, satin stitched all the way around it. And then I cut each of those larger squares into four pieces and assembled it that way. So I did not have to sew curves on this because at that stage in my quilting career, I had never done curves and they scared me. So I reproduced her quilt and I have both of them now together. I will never get rid of them, mainly because of the link between my grandmother and myself. And I think quilting skips a generation because my mother was never a quilter at all. Not much of a sewer either for that matter. So. So that's my story. That's why this is my favorite quilt. And I love that story. And um, I just love how you turn something that you weren't super fond of, but was emotionally attached to into something that is bright and colorful. And like you said, brought it into the 21st century. And now this one will be, um, I'm sure, stay in your household and family for hopefully many, many years to come as well. So I just, I love the story that you were able to share with me, Stephen. So thank you so much for that. Oh, you're welcome. And I think what I'll have to do is make sure that those two quilts somewhere written in my will or whatever, they must go to whoever gets them, have to go together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, sounds good to me. Yep. So thank you so much, Stephen, for joining me. As I said earlier, if you haven't checked out Stephen's channel, definitely do so. He's a lot of fun. There's gonna be something there that you will enjoy. Um, and now we'll go ahead and move on to our next guest. Thanks again, Stephen, for joining us. Thanks, Sean. You're welcome. My next guest is Erica from Little Glass Quilts. She is a um, Instagram and TikTok creator, and she has not come over to YouTube yet, but maybe sometime in the future. So if you are on Instagram, definitely check her out. She does both um, fabric quilting like the rest of us and also stained glass um, items made into out of 
inspiration of glass um into glass i'll let you yep. explain it a little better um can you tell us a bit more about yourself yeah it's a little it's a little interesting so i am erica pinkley i am with little glass quilts um, I like to tell everyone I am first and foremost a needle and thread quilter. My mom had me sitting at a sewing machine since I was nine. I didn't get into doing my stained glass versions of quilt blocks until the pandemic. And it was kind of my pandemic project and I'm self-taught. But because I am first a needle and thread quilter and I knew I wanted to do some kind of stained glass as an homage to my mom that I lost uh, uh, pancreatic cancer. Um, my two heads kind of united and I love glass and love quilting. So I taught myself how to make stained glass and I use quilt blocks as my theme. So um, that's my handle on everything on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook is little glass quilts. So it's, as I like to say, the art of needle and thread transform into the magic of glass and lead. So. Yeah. And I just love that because my dad it, um, does stained glass as well. And that's kind of what drew me to have you on my channel a couple of weeks ago. So um, yeah, definitely head over to Instagram. It's a fun platform. I love scrolling through there and seeing inspiration for um, quilts and everything else. So definitely check out Erica over there. But you have a wonderful quilt that you want to share with us, or at least a story behind it. And um, this is just inspirational to me. And I'm really, really excited to hear the story behind this. So would you like to tell us a bit, bit more about it? I would, I would. I love to talk about it all the time. We in the house and the family, we call it my mom's quilt. I worked on it. There's a lot of my blood, sweat and tears in that quilted well, but it's called my mom. We call it my mom's quilt. It's an actual Air Force quilt. Um, back in 1997, back in the Clinton era, there was um, a powwow meeting at the Pentagon and the Pentagon was sitting down at the round table and they were having a conversation they were talking about the Air Force. It was their 50th anniversary from when they had broken away and said, we are going to be us. So the Pentagon was having this meeting of how can we have a commemorative event and commemorative items to celebrate the Air Force. So during this meeting, a lot of things were thrown out on the table. They were talking about crystal vases. They were talking about wood plaques, like to inlaid in the floors. There was a lot of things that were getting discussed at this time. Somebody suggested doing a quilt. Um, a commemorative quilt. So the meeting passed by and um, at that time, and I don't know if it's the way it is now, but in Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas, it's the mailing center for all the bases in the in the world. So once the, the meeting was done and the list was compiled of all the things that they wanted to have made, it got sent to Randolph Air Force Base and in the mail center, happened to be one of the ladies that was handing the mail was a student of my mother when she was teaching quilting. So my, my student, my mom's student saw this letter, immediately called my mom. She's like, hey, y'all are not going to believe this, but the Pentagon wants a 20 foot square commemorative quilt of all the Air Force bases in the world. And of course, my mom was like, you meant 20 inches, right? <laughs> they all look back at it and they're like, no, they, they want 20 feet. So a 20 foot by 20 foot square quilt. Just to give you a little reference, a visual reference, is the size of four king size bedspreads. Maybe. So the letters all went around the world and uh, with all this stuff. And so my mother went ahead and, and threw her name in the hat. And so the parameters were is it had to be made by somebody that was in the Air Force or had been. Um, and it had to represent every single base in the world. And it had to be done by a certain amount of time because it was going to get shipped off for the celebration um, and your budget. And so my mom went ahead and it had to be their design. So my mom pinned out a design, figured all the boo-ha-ha with it and sent her letter. And towards the wind down of them saying yes or no, it was her and one other lady from Washington, I want to say, that were in head to head on who was going to get it. And the lady from Washington finally bowed out and said, I can't do it. So my mother was given the green light to go. So she had to pin a letter. And that letter was copied and sent out to all the bases in the world. And based on her design, she had 14 inch blocks and she wanted each block in her design, wanted each block to be made by somebody on that base about that base. And then we're all gonna ship them to her and she was gonna put it together in this format. Um, it, <laughs> it was amazing to see all the blocks that came in, but you kind of fast forward to it. Um, she was supposed to have the blocks all between like August, end of August, early September, but people are people, life happens, blah, blah, blah. So she didn't get the last block until Halloween. And the ceremony for all the pieces that were on the round table for suggestion were supposed to be ready for the Pentagon by December 4th. 
Mm. So she didn't get it until Halloween. So she had literally a month to put this bad boy together. So she started doing what she could. There's a block here. There's actually one of them that's from the quilt. She started making keystone pieces and just like space fillers. So she started making those. She started making the, um, the borders, which she hand embroidered. Um, she started making the great seal. She started making what she could until all the blocks came in. And then once they came in, then started the emergency sewing bee. It was me, my sister, a couple of my best friends, one of my coworkers. And we were literally working round the clock, round the clock, literally. I think at the end of it, we went through three sewing machines, two irons and a very well used coffee pot. Um, and I always tell people that they don't know the story of the quilt because it was supposed to go to the Pentagon with everything else. There was going to be a ceremony, which she got tickets to go to it. So she flew to the Pentagon for it and this unveiling. And during the, un during the process of making it, um, they kept asking her, what's the dimensions? What's the dimensions? And she's like, y'all said 20 by 20. So it's 20 by 20. And they kept saying, no, like exactly. And she goes, no, you don't understand. You said 20 by 20. So that's what it is. Come to find out when she went to unveiling, what they were going to do is they were going to put a piece of plexiboard, a plexiglass custom made for the quilt. It was going to lay on the floor in the Pentagon and people were going to be able to walk up to it and see it and look at each of the blocks all the way in the middle. Because where the great seal is here, when I stand underneath it, my head doesn't even go past the first row. Mm -hmm. it massive. It weighs yeah. 93 pounds. Okay. So she goes to the Pentagon and it's on a platform and it's velvet roped off. She didn't really think much of it. It is what it is. She came home and a couple of months later, um, her Pentagon liaison, which I'm gonna drop a name here, was Linda Tripp. This was during the Clinton administration. So Linda Tripp was her go-to. So from the time that it left San Antonio in their plane to the Pentagon, some way, somehow, they spilled jet fuel on the back of this 93-pound, 20-foot square quilt. So it was, it was worried. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. I don't know how to send a voicemail. Sorry about that. Okay, we'll, we'll edit that out. Yeah, so by the time it got to the Pentagon, it was, they were worried that, that people walking on it was going to squish the fuel to the front of it. So it was roped off. And then the reason nobody knows about it, because after this celebration, all the items were supposed to travel for a year to every single base in the United States, in the world. Um, hers, because of the jet fuel and all that fun stuff, her quilt got sent to the Smithsonian and it was given to the fabric textile artists there. And they had it for about five months and they were given the see what you can do to fix it. And so a couple, five, six months later, when Trip calls again and calls my mom and says, okay, look, the Smithsonian, they cannot fix it 100%. This is about as far as they can. So we're gonna send it back to you and you can decide what you want to do with it. Do you want to take out the pieces or do you want to just let it ride? Um, now, mind you, when we were making the quilt, she decided she backed it with denim, six ounce denim, Air Force Blue, and did the bobbin thread all in white because the original plan was it was supposed to be suspended in the middle of a room so people could enjoy the front and the back equally. But right. once the Smithsonian was done with it and they sent it back to her, that was the most terrifying box to open. But when they sent it back, the spills were right around the middle, the main seal, and it kind of looked like, because it was dead, I'm just imagine getting a little dust on your knee. You kind of want to wipe it off, but you can't get it off. That's what it looked like. So it wasn't really predominant, but you could see it if you squinted at it and looked at it sideways. So after much debate, much thought, we decided, she decided, to just go ahead and let it ride. So with that decision, at the same time, at Wright, Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, they were making a place for this to be permanently housed. Again, it was supposed to be suspended in the main foyer so you could see it on both sides, but because of the stain that they couldn't get off from the jet fuel, they went ahead and decided to make a wall, a specific wall just for this quilt. And I had the lucky fortune to go to it a couple months ago, so it was the first time I had seen it in 25 years. So when I go, when you walk into Dayton, Ohio, and you go into the museum, it's right there, right when you walk by. Like you can't, you can't go into the rest of the museum until you see my mom's Air Force quilt. Really, really, really cool. And one of the fun things is, is we were about um, two, three months into it, and she got another phone call, and the phone call was like, "Hey, can you tell us what the dimensions are of the spool of the thread?" And she's like, 
it's thread. And they're like, no, we need to know the dimensions. Okay, so she measured it out, sent them back an email and they sent her back and they're like, okay, send us two spools. Had no idea what the truck was going on, right? So we send the two spools to them. They send them back. Um, they, there was, during this time, there was one shuttle that was specifically because of the 50th anniversary for the Air Force, was specifically manned by nothing but Air Force pilots. That's all they had were Air Force astronauts in this. And they put the two spools in a care package of other items that went up there. So when the care package came back to her, she had specific instructions to use one of the spools in its complete entirety of the space thread in the quilt. And then the other spool, she was supposed to use about half of it. And then they were going to put that spool in a little glass case with it, along with the story at the museum. It's been 25 years later and nobody knows where the other spool is. Like we kept joking, like, can, can we, can we spell space thread? How much would people pay for three feet of space thread? You know? So it was like a running joke with us. And I don't know if someone actually did that or if I got lost or whatever. So we don't know where the space thread is, but it's kind of cool. There's, there's actual thread in this that went up into space. We need. Yeah. And it, it was also funny too, because she kept saying how many, how many bases, how many bases and the air force either couldn't or wouldn't tell her how many bases. So she ended up coming up with a solution that she's got in each of the corners an homage. One is an homage to all the bases in the Pacific, in the Midwest, in the East, blah, 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 just like a blanket thing. But yeah. all in all, there's 83 blocks made from all the bases around the world. They're all 14 by 14. Um, some of them use the actual patches from the pilots. Some of them use the bandanas from the pilots, that, but they all made it close, they, they made it representative of what they, what their base was. There's applique, there's uh, foundation paper piecing, there's red work, there, I mean, any kind of quilting needlework that you can think of, these amazing people came up with it. It was so much fun to open each one of the blocks when they came in. It was like Christmas for every single one of them, like, ooh, ah, it was, yeah, it was quite fascinating. So my favorite quilt is my mom's Air Force quilt. And so the way she did it is, she did them in nine by nine sections. So she would piece them in a nine by nine and then um, she handmade bias tape to go on the back. So the quilting bee, what we ended up having to do is when she got them in sections, she bought two 12 foot long tables and she would sew them together, flip it over, you know, and do the flange. And then we would have to hand stitch the bias tape all up right. and down 20 foot runs. So I was busy for quite some time, I'm sure. Oh, uh, well, we only had a month. Yeah. <laughs> we only had one. yeah so the poster that i have here um i live in san antonio so there was only one place in the entire city that could stand a camera back with controlled lighting to be able to take a picture of the whole thing in its entirety and at that time it was the professional photographer for the san antonio spurs so the air force commissioned him we escorted the quilt to there so we got to be in there when he took this picture and um there was only the one run of the posters. Like if you go to the museum right now and you get to see the quilt, there you can't even buy the posters anymore. They only did that one run. Never have understood that because they sell other posters, but um, we got lucky and, and <clears throat> we have one of the last few of the quilt, but it was quite the journey to, to finish this. And I remember when she was done, you know, I'd asked her, I was like, would you ever do this again? And she's like, I'll get back with you on that one. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing that story with us. It's yeah. definitely, um, you know, one for the one for the pages, you know, because it's not like you said, like anybody else's story is going to be. And I just think it's great that it's on a permanent display, and you know, it's you know, massive. yeah, it might be fun to go see one day. So thank you so much for joining me on this. I appreciate yes. your time and sharing the story of your mom's quilt and that you know the part that you played in this as well. Mm -hmm. And move on to our next guest and in, in the show my next guest is Kristen from scrap fabric love we have had Kristen on my channel once before and I'm so excited to have her back with me once again and so for um you want to just take a few moments to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your channel what you do do you do lives do you do scrappy projects and that sort of thing there 
Sure. Thanks for having me back. Um, I had so much fun on the channel before. Um, yeah, I'm I'm Kristen. So my channel is called Scrap Fabric Love. Um, I'm a relatively new quilter. I started quilting during COVID, as a lot of us did. <laughs> and um, but I've kind of uh, in the past did a lot of upcycling. So I'm really into kind of uh, scrappy quilts using other people's remnants, scraps, jeans. The quilt that I'm talking about today has got. Um, it's basically made up of old jeans and there's a, a secondhand duvet cover for the backing and stuff like that. So I do a lot of improv sewing and I'm not a big one for heavily measuring things. I kind of wing it a lot of the time. And then when I want to be precise, I do foundation paper piecing and I sometimes uh, design foundation paper piecing patterns as well. So nice. Yeah, I, I love your channel. I don't get to watch it as often as I would like. <laughs> Um, but you do a lot of wonderful work. So if you guys in the chat or the um, watching this as a replay haven't checked out Kristen's channel, definitely head over and check it out. I think you'll really enjoy it. And I'll put the um, link in the description along with everybody else. But the um, reason we're here is to talk about our favorite quilt. And Kristen has it with her. It should be behind her, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your, this quilt and why it's special to you and why it's your favorite. Yeah, so sorry about the lighting. It's nighttime here in the UK when Sean's talking to me, but I'm going to send him a photo. But this is it. It's um the denim I call it denim and scraps quilt I guess a very creative name it's um it's quilt as you go so um each one of the I guess quarter blocks you'd call it um was kind of cut separately and pieced so it's like squares of denim jeans and then quilting scraps some of them are like binding scraps some of them are like double folded um, and they're just sort of wonkily placed kind of and then it all goes together and makes this kind of colorful diamonds and it was just a lot of fun to do and I really love a denim quilt I've done three or four I cannot share it maybe four yeah but this is my favorite and I just love like how soft it is you know to like you don't think that a denim but a denim the denim quilts are always the softest they're always yeah so I just I love how warm and heavy it is as well so yeah I was gonna be definitely heavy and um I, I really love that you made it out of denim. I have not made a quilt out of denim yet. It kind of scares me, but maybe I'll give it a go now that you've shown me this. And I'm normally I'm very, <laughs> and normally I'm very OCD and um, things like that um, are not my I idea of fun. You want them to match, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I said that, I love the quilt that you did and the design. It looks great. And even with my OCD tendencies, I think it looks great and um, <laughs> happily do something like that myself so i mean that you know you've given me inspiration to um possibly do something like that in the near future because i do want to do more scrappy projects in the upcoming year yeah well this is um there's two videos on my youtube channel about one's just about how to make the block and the other one's about how to put it all together and then there's one big post on my blog it's like a free pattern tutorial thing so people can go and see but it's very forgiving because yeah they don't have to match so you got you want to match the corners of the these blocks but that's it and denim stretchy so it's easy um <laughs> I definitely have to go check those videos out because that, that'd be something fun to do yeah yeah no it is it's like kind of that mindless just do it and it just turns out kind of that's the kind of stuff I like where you don't have to stress about it too much I, and I love those sort of projects you know sometimes I like the preciseness of a you know, like an Elizabeth Hartman project, but sometimes I like the mindless stuff. I mean, I did a scrappy project early this year and um, it was just mindless and I love that about it. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was great. And I just, you know, thank you once again for taking the time for to join us here today and sharing oh, this quilt. Cool. And it looks like the lighting's getting better for some reason. I don't know how it could be. It's still dark here. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, let's take yeah. that as a good sign. So, Thank you so much, Kristen, for joining me. And we'll now move on to our next guest. Our next guest is Eric Oda from Treasure Heart. Creations. Creations. <laughs> Two out of three, it's almost a passing grade. Um, very excited to actually finally be able to do um, a collaboration with Eric. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I would love it if you just take a few moments just to talk about yourself, your channel, what sort of things you do and so forth. Well, thanks. First of all, thanks for the invite to participate in this. I'm, I, I was actually quite shocked when you sent me the message that you wanted me as a part of this. So thank you, Sean. Um, 
My name is Eric Buda, and I run a channel called Treasure Heart Creations. And we do, well, mostly we started off with quilting uh, tutorials, but we, I'm now venturing out into all aspects of crafting from wreath making. Now I'm doing a series of ornaments. Um, probably in 2023, we're gonna do a little bit of card making and paper crafting. So we just, I'm a jack of all trades and expert of none, as they say, but I just like to dabble in all sorts of crafts. Um, Again, we started off as a quilting channel in which a lot of uh, viewers have enjoyed a series that I've called 52 Weeks and 52 Blocks, where we were doing one block a week. And that was a major undertaking, but I'm glad I survived that. But um, yeah, so we're just all about just crafting in general and just having fun and sharing the joy of making stuff with your hands. So that's Treasure Heart Creations for you. That's excellent. And I, I, I enjoy watching your channel when, when I can. And I, you know, if anyone hasn't checked out Eric's channel, please definitely go ahead and ch check it out. I'll have the description along with everybody else's in the description. So you can definitely check out Eric's videos afterwards because I think you will enjoy them. So um, I've asked Eric to bring along his favorite quilt and he actually has it with him, um, which is really neat. So we'd like to show us your quilt um, and explain to us why it's your favorite if, if, and if there's a good story behind it. <laughs> well, there is sort of a good story behind it because this is actually the very first quilt that I ever put together from start to finish. Excellent. And back, back in, oh gosh, 2012, I believe. Um, that's when, well, it's the, this quilt kind of tells the story of my whole quilting journey altogether because. Originally, I didn't want to learn how to quilt. I actually wanted to learn how to um, design my own pants. And okay. for those of you that don't know me, I do stand six feet, six inches tall. And living here in Los Angeles, when you're in the land of Hollywood, you're either a size two or a size zero. And for us big boys, we it's very hard for us to find clothes. So I was... Um, looking for sewing classes where I can actually sew my own pants. And since most of the sewing classes were done um, during the day, during work hours, I, of course I couldn't take any of those classes. So I started looking on YouTube and I just typed in sewing. And the first thing that pops up is Miss Jenny Doan of Missouri Star Quilt Company. And me not knowing anything about quilting, I just said, okay, at least she's teaching me how to sew. So I started watching videos about quilting and I was like, you know, she's making it look so easy. I can kind of do that. So I started making quilts and lo and behold, she was, there was a video where she was teaching how to do a disappearing nine patch. And okay. that's how I did it with this. And so, because this was the first, the very first quilt that I ever put together, there were so many things that I did wrong. Um, my quarter inch was kind of a 16th of an inch seam allowance in some spots. Um, I had no idea what binding was. So I just basically flipped the backing and sewed it onto the front. And that was my binding. Um, there were times where I had to, or I sewed the wrong pieces together. Um, and even putting the block together, I kind of didn't follow the instructions. You know, when you do a disappearing nine patch, you sew the nine patch and then you cut it in half vertically and then horizontally, not right. me. I actually cut all the individual pieces and sewed on each of these individual pieces together. So it was a lot of extra sewing in that respect. But um, because this was the first one and because it was, um, you know, it just held something special to me because every so often I like to come back to this particular block and make another quilt out of it. And then every time I've, do th I've done that, it show sort of shows the path of how, how far I've come throughout the years in terms of my skill level, in terms of the experience, and in terms of the even the down to the fabric choices that I made. Right. Um, and it's a it's for me because again this is the first one this is like the benchmark and every every year when I or every so often when I make this particular block design 
I always compare it to the first one. And because it's the first one, it's always the most special one and the most memorable one too. So um, even though when I look at it now, it's like the ugliest thing in the world, but it still holds a special place in my heart because this is sort of like where I started and all the stuff that I'm creating now is where I am now. So it's, it's always good to go back to the original. And over the years, it's well loved as you can kind of see it's very wrinkly and yes. the batting is kind of falling apart inside, but I still love it. I still use it. Um, it gets washed a lot and it gets used a lot. So I think I'm going to hold on to this one until the very last thread comes yep. out. And even if I get holes on it, you know, you can always applicate something over it to cover it. Right. So exactly. Uh, and I just love that story. Um, that you, um, you still have your first quilt. I have half of my first quilt, incidentally, and this is it here. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I was telling someone else a story you know, quite recently that I made a quilt and I decided to try and double, double side it and it just didn't work. Um, so I ended up buying some backing fabric, bound, you know, back the other one, sent it to my niece. And then I, this, which was originally be the backing for that quilt as like same reason as you, like just as a reminder of where I came from, where I started, because I really do believe that every quilt shares a story and teaches us a lesson. Mm -hmm. We are, we are, and we're all at where we are today because of where we started. You've got to be able to crawl before you can walk and run and then win marathons and so forth. So, Right. Yeah, I, I think I love your story, and I'm I'm so appreciative that you um decided to share that with us. Yeah, well, you're um you're actually you're, and I'm glad you kind of mentioned that because what I am thinking about, or there's a series that I'm kind of thinking about, is I do have other quotes that have stories that have very very deeper meaning. So I was kind of considering on doing a whole series of videos, um, telling these stories almost like an extended trunk show. So, um. Yeah, if, if you're a subscriber and if you're a follower of mine, just be on the lookout for that. That sounds great. And I know a lot of the viewers um, would absolutely love that. Um, I did we, I did a collaboration recently um, with Stephen Bland and we talked about our five favorite quilts and I got such wonderful feedback on that. So yeah, definitely do that, Eric. Um, and let us know when you're ready to do that because you'll have a lot of people come on over to watch that. All right. I will do that then. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Eric. And we'll now move on to our next guest. And um, if you haven't checked out Eric's channel, please do so. I'm sure you'll love it. Mm. Thanks, guys. Okay. So my next guest is a favorite of mine. It is Stephanie from Stephanie Stitches. She's been one of my oldest YouTube buddies. Um, you know, she was one of the first ones to reach out to me um, when I started this journey last year. And it's just been an absolute blast to hang out with her on several occasions. So for the viewers that may not know her, which is probably only like one or two of you, would you like to tell <laughs> us about um, yourself, your channel, what you do and so forth? Well, thank you so much for having me. First of all, it's been a pleasure getting to know you over the last year. It's been a lot of fun watching you grow. So, um, but yeah, I'm Stephanie of Stephanie Stitches. Uh, I'm, I sell fabric, I'm a long arm quilter, and I'm also here on YouTube. I love teaching new quilters how to sew. Um, and I sew every, well, not every, but almost every Saturday, uh, Saturdays with Steph live at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I do a lot of sew alongs, uh, some free from myself, some from other companies, um, things like that. So I really love this craft and I'm so happy to be a part of it and part of this community. Well, thank you. And you do a wonderful job of your channel. I try to tune in as often as I can. Thank um, you. I was actually one of the lucky winners earlier this year of one of the quilt kits that she did with, um, I think it was Fort Worth Quilt Studio. And so that was really neat. So I got to participate in that. And um, I've always had fun doing different events with you as well. Thank so you. Um, the reason we're all here is to see your favorite quilt. So we'd like to tell us about your favorite quilt. Um, did you bring it with you? Um, tell sure. us a bit about why it's special to you and you know anything else you might like to add. Sure, no worries. Uh, well, when Sean had asked me to bring my favorite quilt, I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> it's like picking your favorite child or your favorite animal. Uh, there's so many, 
But the one behind me um, is my favorite, I guess if I had to pick a favorite holiday quilt, my family loves this one the best. It's just so cute and cheerful. And this was actually a Fort Worth Fabric Studio um, sew along. So it was a lot of fun. I actually wasn't sewing with them then, but I sewed it on my channel and that's what made them find me and ask me to sew a long quilt. So that led to something else. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> but um, I would say if I had to pick one quilt and it's probably not, I wouldn't say my favorite, but the one that I'm most proud of is my mosaic star quilt because um, it was my brainchild. I made the pattern. Um, I figured out how to use the ombre fabric uh, to make the stars and the pattern has done really well now in my shop. So thank you everybody who's purchased it. Um, and I custom quilted this one. So I put a lot of work into this quilt. So I'm the most proud of this quilt. So I'll hold this up. Probably can't see a ton of it because I'm very short. <laughs> I'm tall and I still have that issue. Yeah. But this is the, if I had to pick a, maybe not favorite, but the one I'm most proud of is this quilt. So, yeah. So that's and that. I have to love that quilt. Um, I remember I was on a live with you earlier this year and made a mosaic star. I haven't got it right mm -hmm. here in front of me, but it's such a fun and easy pattern to do as well. So, yeah, and I just love the pat the um, ombre fabric that you chose for that. And it's one of my favorite quilts that you've done as well. So, oh, thank um, you. I'm not at all surprised that that's the one that you picked. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, there's so many. Um, and I do, I have given a lot of quilts away over the years, so I don't have a lot of them. But um, I was debating between this one and my rainbow baby quilt, because um, we have a rainbow baby. So that was my therapy. Um, yes. But because this was my own and my design, that's why I was like, OK, I need to pick this one, because I'm the most proud of this one. So yeah. I've <laughs> It was either going to be that or one of the ones where you got that pretty, pretty blue, pretty blue ribbon earlier this year too. Oh um, yeah, <laughs> that was great. It's it's been a fun year for me um, with quilting. This I did get a few ribbons this year, so I'm really proud of that and got up the you know courage to actually put them in shows. So yeah, and you did too. So congratulations. Thank you. You too. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining me, Stephanie. It was a blast having you, and I'm really glad that you got to be part of this project. And we'll now move on to our next guest. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. Okay, so our next guest is a good friend of mine, Martha from Martha's Creative Life. She has been with us on YouTube for about six months or so, I believe it is. But um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your channel, Martha? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Martha, and I have my uh, YouTube channel, Martha's Creative Life. Um, I've had it. Um, it's been about five months because I actually looked today at my very first video. I was showing my husband, look at the difference between now and then. then. And I looked, I was like, oh, it's actually five months ago. Hard to believe. Time has flown by. And um, I am just loving having a channel so much. It's been such a, um, just a wonderful little thing to do on the side and I'm meeting so many new people I didn't expect to meet so many new friends um, here in the YouTube community viewers and other fellow content creators very nice and what sort of videos do you produce do you do tutorials do you do unboxings do you do a little bit of everything well starting out I was doing unboxings just because that was the um uh, kind of like the easy thing to do to go ahead and get content out because uh, I get the sew sampler box and then you have I've been doing the collab uh, together with uh, the roses your way holiday countdown box so that's been a lot of fun so I've done a lot of unboxings to begin with and but for 2023 my goal is going to be to do more tutorials because that's more important to me I want to be able to um, you know, I don't know everything. I'm kind of like Danny, where she says she's so not an expert. <laughs> I'm not an expert either, but I do love learning and then showing, you know, things that I learn along the way. And that's awesome. And that's something that I think all of us as content creators do. Like you go into this with a certain mindset, this is what I'm going to do. And it's great to get your feet wet and do something, but then refine your skills as you go along. So I, I think it's great that you're doing that. So let's now move on to, um, the other reason we're here today, which is our quilt trunk show. And I heard that you brought your quilt along with you. So we just have to show it. It's very appropriate for the season. And then tell <laughs> us why it's your favorite and if you got a cool story behind it. Okay. All right. Um, well, mine is the, my Grinch quilt. And um, I don't know if I'll be able to put all of it up in the screen. 
So I'm just gonna kind of start at the top and kind of go down. And I think that's about as far as I can go on it. But um, this was um, special to me. I had the panel, I've had it for a couple of years now, but all of these squares, that one right there, they were all together on um, just a panel of fabric. And so I cut up all the panels and um, I can't find the panel anymore. I tried to look for it because someone was looking for it and we couldn't find it anymore. So it's, um, they do have a lot of, uh, they have, do have a new panel out or at least it seems like it's new um, because the Grinch is so popular this holiday season. Anytime yeah, I go to Hobby Lobby, he's everywhere. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, he's very, very popular. And that's something that I've always noticed with fabric is if you go to the store and you see it, even mm -hmm. if you don't know what you got to do with it, buy it because you may go back a week or a month or so later and it's gone. I mean, it seems like they do limited runs on just about any everything. So yeah, don't, um, I mean, obviously don't go on the debt, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah if, you, if you had the money and you really want it, don't, don't leave it sitting on the shelf because it, you, you, yeah, you'll be upset when you go back. Right. Um, <laughs> So I really love that quilt. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I need to do a Grinch quilt at some point. I have some material here, but not nearly enough. So um, yeah, maybe you and everyone else can keep me accountable to make that in 2023. I love that. Can I show you the back of it too? I have oh, something absolutely. to show you on the back. Okay. So, you know, most of your quilts, the focal point is always going to be the front of the quilt. But I think Karen Brown from Just Get It Done Quilts um, she taught me how to do an after quilt. And so this is what I thought was super neat. So I went to my local quilt, quilt store and um, got the backing, which they had this backing this year. So they still had another Grinch collection. Um, well, going back to the front, this green and this red, I had gotten it from Joann's a couple years ago when I had gotten the panel. The panel didn't come from Joann's, it came from my local quilt store. Um, where we used to live a couple years ago. So I just thought I had bought this first. And then when I went to Joanne's, I saw this and I thought, oh, those colors would look really good with um, the panel that I have. But, you know, I just kind of set it aside and thought I'd come back to it later. So I don't know if Joanne still has it or not. So what I did is I took it and probably got maybe about a yard and a half of each. And I cut it into three inch strips and sewed it on the um, sides of all the squares after I cut them out. But I had some left over on the back and unfortunately I didn't get enough of this fabric. <laughs> so that's where the after quilt came in. And on the back, down at the bottom, I've got this. Oh, that's cute. So it's some of the red left over. I've got some of the green and then some more of the red here, but right here in the middle is the salvage. Oh, that's nice. And up at the top, well, actually I think that's the salvage too. It was part of the panel. So it actually says Dr. Seuss Enterprises um, by Robert Kaufman, and it gave like the screen print number. So I put all that in the back of the quilt and made my after quilt. Can you see that part of it? Yeah, it looks great. Okay. And that's a great idea because yeah, you, know, you can look at it, you know, years from now with someone else and go, okay, <laughs> which line do you use? I mean, it's it's all it's all there for you. So I mean, what a what a wonderful idea. Um, you. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd never heard of that before. So, um, yeah, and this has just been such a learning experience doing this project. I've seen so many different quilts and so many different um, ideas. And I'm just glad that you showed this to us as well, because it's something else we can um, potentially do for our own quilts. Yeah, so it definitely wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it, you, know, you, you know, you learn from this person, you pass it on to this one, and it just, it goes downhill. I mean, we're not, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's way too big for us to see everybody's videos. So yeah, if we, we, we all learn from each other. And the first time you interviewed me, you asked me what I hate doing on the quilt. And I said, it's the binding. <laughs> 
I think I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that looks great. <laughs> On this binding, I was like so happy with myself. Um, I did the back first and then brought it over to the front. But I did my mitered corners. <laughs> and take some practice. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> and so, yeah, if you're not happy of your binding, you know, just keep practicing it. Eventually, mm -hmm. you'll get better. I mean, I used to be horrible. Like my first few quilts, yeah, the binding looked like it was done by, you know, <laughs> half drunk gorilla. But, you know, now it's, you know, <laughs> they're looking pretty good. You know, I mean, I actually got a decent report card on my binding from the judges. So, you know, I must be doing something right. But, That's awesome. uh, I just want to say thank you, Martha, so much for joining me on this project. It's been a blast doing this with you. And we'll now move on to our ne next guest. All right. Thank you so much, Sean. So our next guest is our last guest, and by no means our least guest, um, you know, last but not least, it is Handmade by Ying with Donna. A lot of you people already know Donna, but, um, you know, because she's been around for a little while, about as long as I have. And I'm super excited to have her join me on another project. And for those that don't know who you are, Donna, which it might be one or two people, um, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel and what you do? Absolutely. And first and foremost, thank you for inviting me into this joint collab with you. It's an honor and a privilege once again to be working with you. Um, oh, I um, am relatively a new quilter, began in 2020, and we started our YouTube in April of this year and it's kicking off with a bang and we're grateful and blessed for all of our subscribers new and old um we have some that do overlap and it's a blessing that we can see and work with them um, my channel is more interview based charity based and project based um the quote that i'm going to present to you today um that you asked me to pull one of my favorites is my rainbow bar jello it's near and dear to my heart because this is the first one where i've taught from beginning to end. And to me, it was an honor to do this with so many. I had about 20 join online and do it that way with me. And this project here, I had about 40 or 50 that actually sewed along at home and then mailed me pictures of their work. So to hit that many lives, it's, it's really touching to see. Yes, and I, I, I did not participate because I didn't have jelly rolls and I would have done the exact same um color scheme as you did um but I did catch one of your lives because you started at midnight I think it was yep. um <laughs> it's really neat to hop on and watch and see so many people on there and it was funny because Courtney kept texting me and saying hey jump on jump on the live and I'm like I'm not doing the project and I'm ready to go to bed and go to sleep so <laughs> we get our first burst of energy at midnight you know yeah, I'm, I'm we, we both not... have so many friends that are out there and about, and you want to make sure that your prog, you have that time slot, but yet you've always got the replay. Absolutely. And that's how I feel about my Saturday morning live is, you know, some people are night owls and that's, um, they've got Donna to um, entertain them at night. And then if you want someone first thing in the morning, you got me. So, you know, we all, I think it works out really well in that way. And then the Donna's just... Worlds. Yeah, Donna's just up all the time because, you know, she's up all night and then she hops on and moderates for me in the morning. So, I mean, which I really, really appreciate as well. So do you want to show us the um, quilts in a little more detail? Absolutely. This is the Bargello that I let in. And um, the quilting on it, I'll tell you a little tidbit about it here in a moment. I'm not going to open it up in its entirety, but Sean, I did send you a couple pictures. If you'd yeah, be able yeah. to showcase those. But the yep. quilting on this bar jello is outstanding. This is going to be a joint collab that I'm doing with Beth of Goody Goods. We're going to spearhead on this project, and this is going to be a show quilt. It came together, the quilting on it, so fabulous. I would be remiss if we didn't um, showcase not just my um, putting it together and piecing it, but the magnitude of Beth as she quilted this just brought this in full circle. The added bonus is we've got an amazing label that, and it's already got the um, hanging sleeve. I added that. The binding is a flanged binding and um, the back, you're gonna love the back. This is the backing. Is Very that nice. not amazing? This yeah, is the perfect backing for this particular quilt. 
the hanging sleeve is going to match it. And the added bonus here is, wait till you see it. You're going to love it. Our label. It looks like a rainbow as well. Oh, very cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. So it's um, it says somewhere under the rainbow. That's what Beth and I have dubbed this quilt. Created September of 2022. Pieced by Hime by Ying, Donna Strunz, and quilted by Beth of Goody Goods. So I believe when you share in a project, you name everybody involved. And yes, it's yes. been, this is one of many favorites. Each time we do a project, it's always our favorite in the moment. But I've this seen. one, it's definitely going to be my second show quilt, and I'm loving it. Yeah, and we, we'll, we'll be looking for that blue ribbon or that nice purple best of show ribbon next year absolutely i have no doubts it's going to play somewhere so um i'm thankful and blessed for the opportunity to be here with you tonight and um i know this is going to air sometime around christmas so on behalf of joe and i we would like to wish your subscribers and ours a very merry christmas and a wonderful prosperous new year well thank you and thank you again donna for joining us and as i said donna is our last guest but i'm not ending this just yet i would like to again say thank you to each of the content creators that took time out of their days to correspond with me and be part of this wonderful project i was so excited to see each and every one of these stories again and i hope you guys enjoyed the video as well don't forget to vote for your favorites with the google form i'm going to leave it open for about a week so that way you all have time to watch this and go through and pick out your favorites and then we'll announce the winners and it'll be for bragging rights of course um about about a week from now, and I'll either do it on a standalone video or possibly as part of a podcast or something else like that. We'll just see how that works. But again, thank you. I'm so gracious you took time out of your day to watch this video. Definitely hit the like button, share, and support all of these wonderful creators. Go check out their channels. If it's something you like, consider subscribing to them as well because they all put out fantastic content. So I hope you all have a great day. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.